Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Just getting myself together here. I'm going to attempt to make a doll sweater in the time that I'm going to be doing this live. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> For everybody joining, I'm attempting to make a doll sweater. I do not have a pattern. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can figure out making any type of sweater for any size person, just a basic button up the front sweater. Um, you just need to know your gauge um, and the, the measurements. I'm trying to get myself together here. The coffee is just not working. The motivation is not in the bottom of this cup for sure. Okay, we're going to start. I've already figured out um, from my yarn label um, how many stitches per inch I need. And we are going to get started here. Don't need that. Move that out of my way. I'm going to use the long tail cast on. And we are going to do a doll sweater. I'm going to do the back piece. We're going to start that and we're going to make it four inches. Uh, the yarn I'm using is six, six stitches per inch. So I want four inches worth of width. So we need 24 stitches. So we're going to do the long tail cast on. And I'm going to cast on 24 stitches. Good morning, everybody coming in. Twelve, we're counting stitches here. Okay, we've got 24 stitches casted on here, and we are going to work on making a doll sweater. I need my yarn bowl, seriously, and I don't know. I've moved my craft from around, and I don't know where I've placed my yarn bowl, and it would help hold this yarn for me. It's around here somewhere. I'm not going to worry about it today. Well, we'll struggle through it. Struggle through it. Hey, Brooks. Yeah, long time no talk. Working on a doll sweater today. Going to see if we can't get this done today. This sweater should actually fit a 8-inch around doll. So this being the back piece, 4 inches. Um... kind of doesn't look like it's going to make four inches but we're going to trust the label because this is going to spread out a little bit yep that's pretty close so we're going to go ahead and start with this uh this is just regular knitting i'm currently making a doll sweater baby doll sweater uh just basically to show you how to construct a sweater from start to finish Um, yeah, cast on, purl stitch, and a knit stitch. That's really the only two stitches there is in, um, knitting net. Um, just a knit and a purl, and I, I'm going to show you how to do both of those here as I'm going through. Uh, this is just regular, um, continental style knitting. 
Um, I hold the yarn in my right hand. Um, English style knitting, you would hold it over this way and knit. Um, there's not one right way or one wrong way to knit. It's all based on whoever's knitting and what works best for them. So currently, I've got the cast on. I'm going to do a knit two, purl two rib across here. So a knit stitch, you go to the left of your stitch, go in, your needle goes up the back side, wrap your yarn counterclockwise. I'm weaving in my end as I'm working. I've got two strands there. Um, I'll tell you why I do that. I don't like weaving in a lot of ends at the end. So I kind of like to work them in as I go. Now we're going to do the purl stitch. We're going to bring the yarn to the front and you're going to go in from the right side of the stitch and your needle is going to stay to the front of your working needle or the one that's holding your working stitches and you're going to wrap it counterclockwise. I need to pull these a little tighter here, this one. There we go. And that's purl stitch. Again, in from the right side, needle to the front. Wrap it counterclockwise. This first row is always a little fiddly for me trying to get this done and work this in at the same time. But yeah, pretty much not unless we have someone who really wants to me to show the stitches. We're here pretty much to show the sweater, but we can we can show the stitches as well. Um, I'm just working across knit two, purl two, and we're going to do a couple rows of this. Not many because it is a doll sweater. So. Oh, if you have problems with patterns, I'm here to help. I do teach a class on Tuesday. I'm not sure if you've been in on my classes on Tuesdays. Um, we won't have one this Tuesday because I have a health appointment. Um, but yeah, I've helped people with patterns. I've helped people with their projects. Um, I help people learn how to knit, also teach crochet. It is absolutely free. There is no charge. You just have to make sure that your phone, laptop, computer, whatever you're watching it on is charged or plugged in. Okay, now we've got to the end of this row. We're going to work maybe two or three more rows, probably about four. So I only need about half an inch. There's probably only going to be about three rows because six rows might not be six rows, but it's six stitches that make an inch for this. So I can work with you on, you know, any pattern. Um, if it's a free pattern, I can look the pattern up and help you directly. If it's a paid pattern, I might have to have you just send me a snippet of the row, only the row that you're working with, because you're not allowed to share paid patterns. You shouldn't. And I can help you work through it. Oh, um, a normal size sweater probably would have taken me because, you know, all my kids are grown and I'm pretty much homebound. Probably about a week, but because of health limitations and things, it takes me a little longer now. I'm coming back here to where I wove in those ends. You can see it looks like I have two stitches, but they're all in the same stitch here. So we have to work those both together. Let me make sure. Yeah, we're on the two knits. And then two pearls. Um, I basically just wanted to show basic construction of a sweater. And I can show you this pretty much all in one day on a smaller scale. My sister does make baby dolls, so I'm going to give her this um, crochet baby dolls. I'm going to give her this to, um, oh, no problem. No problem. I'm, I'm here to help. But like I was saying, I'll probably give this to my sister and she can put it on one of her dolls. Hopefully it's big enough. My mother actually has one of the dolls over at her house. She lives right next door to me. But, um, I'm not going to go wake her up to get measurements of the doll, so we're just going to work this like this. Still doing a knit two, purl two rib. And I'm 
I'm just working to the end of the row. Yes, I can, um, Ezell, I will show you um, knit and purl rows here in just a second. I'm putting a knit two, purl two rib on here, and I can slowly demonstrate the purl stitch and the knit stitch. I'm probably going to start that right now because, as I said, this is to go on to a baby doll. And I don't really need, you know, three or four inches of rib because it's a miniature sweater. And you can see we've got some, my camera will scan in here, knit two purl two ribs. All right. I think I want to turn this TV down just a little bit so it doesn't, I don't know if you guys could hear my TV. I wanted to make sure that it's not overtaking. Now I'm going to do a knit row and this is going to become the right side of my work. And we're just going to knit all the way across, and I will demonstrate the knit stitches as we go across. Okay, the knit stitch, you go to the left of your stitch that you're working, and your needle goes in and behind the needle that's holding the stitch. Okay, and then you wrap your yarn counterclockwise, and you pull your stitch through. And then this one gets dropped off. Okay, again to the left of the stitch, counterclockwise wrap, and knock your stitch off. Okay, this is the knit stitch. I hope that my camera is staying in focus enough that you can see this. If not, please let me know. And we're going to just slowly work this so you can see this knit stitch across to the other side. And we only have 24 stitches, so it's not too many. And this again is the knit stitch. I'm going to have to try and knit left-handed um, so that if I have any left-handed people, I can actually show you. Um, but I have been told that if you turn your phone or laptop, tablet, whatever you're watching away from you, and have it facing a mirror that you can see it left-handed. I'm not so sure about this. Um, I might have to take a look at it and see. Now we've completed one whole knit row. Oh no, I'm not going to change it. It's just if I have a left-handed knitter that needs assistance, I can show them left-handed because they do the technique differently than a right-handed knitter. I'm not going to change that and and try to teach you how to do it that way but so that I can assist someone who might need that now we've turned our work and we're going to do a purl row so the yarn comes to the front before I was knitting the yarn was to the back you're going to bring your yarn to the front and I just hold it over this way so that I can show you. Now when we did the knit stitch, your needle went in from the left side of the stitch. On the purl, your needle goes in from the right side of the stitch. You're going to go right into this little V section right here, right underneath the needle, and you're going to bring your needle to the front. The, the knit was to the back, the purl is to the front, from the right side and to the front. Now this is the reason why you have to have your yarn to the front. Okay, when you do the purl stitch. And then again, you just wrap it counterclockwise and you're going to pull that stitch through this way. Um, easy project for beginners, and I'll show you this again to the right and in the front, counterclockwise wrap. Um, I would start off, if you know the stitches, if you're confident in a knit and a purl stitch, um, I would start off with... Um, Making squares. You can make squares and sew them together to make bags, um, to make clothing, to make blankets. Um, if you want something more useful, um, you can make dishcloths out of cotton yarn. And you can practice your knit and purl stitch. Um, I don't know if I mentioned scarves. You can make scarves. It's a little bit of a longer project and you can do that all knit which you would knit every row, which would give you a garter stitch ripple, which is kind of looks like the pearl side of a project with just a little bit more space between each one. 
um, things like that that will help you practice your stitches. Um, if you're really confident in knitting pearls and you need a little practice on your increases, um, you could make a shawl, a uh, triangle-shaped shawl. Um, you would do your increases on the sides. Um, yeah, small projects like that. So you can practice your, your stitches. Um, tension seems to be always an issue for new knitters. Um, sometimes you luck out and you, you do pretty good, especially if you come over from crochet, you already kind of know, you know, a te um, about your tension. Did that help you with that purl row? Um, I'm, I'm going to do another purl one here as soon as I do this knit row, if you need to see that again, Ezel. I'm just going to work really quickly through this knit row so we can get back over to that purl row again. And I'm going to kind of work a little bit faster because I wanted to try and get the whole sweater done um, before 10, 10.30 today. Which shouldn't be an issue because I'm not using a really fine, fine yarn, which would take a lot more rows to make an inch. Um, I didn't want to go worsted weight with it this small because it would just be too chunky looking. I did want to go smaller, but I think it would have taken me more time to do. Okay, we're going to do another purl row. Okay, and you want to make clothing. Um, yeah, it's very easy to make clothing, just like I'm showing you now. Um, if you wanted to make this exact same sweater your size, you could do that. You just have to take the measurements and do a little bit of the math. If you need help with that, um, you can um, give me the measurements and I will help you with the math. Um, for a cardigan like this, the button-up, you'd want to measure around the widest part of the torso. And then from there we can do the math. Oh, you're talking about delicate knitting, like lacy stuff. That that comes with a little bit more practice, because sometimes you know you you have to do you have to do different things to manipulate your stitches. And I can show you some lacy things. I can show you lacy things on you know like a dishcloth size. You just have to get a a smaller ply of the um, cotton yarn, and I have patterns for. Um, lacy dishcloths and you can have lacy dishcloths you can practice that and then work up to lacy clothing I would not recommend um, new knitters to jump into really 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 big projects like lacy clothing because it gets um, it, it could get um, what's the word I'm looking for discouraging there it is and again here's the um, purl stitch you go in from the right and to the front wrap counterclockwise you're always wrapping counterclockwise um, to wrap it this way it makes it hard to pull it back through plus it changes the um, the look of the stitch um, there are some where you actually take the stitch off and you'll twist it around and put it back on the needle before you do it, which gives a different detail um, and texture to the front side of your work. Um, there's all kinds of things. Um, cables where you move stitches. Like these are the next two I would do, but for a cable you would move these two and do these first and then do these. I'll show some of that. Um, in my lives as well not so much today because we're going to try and work through this yes uh, so many patterns for clothes um, what which pattern would you like to start with and I can get you started And I don't even know if you have, do you have all the materials required to start one of those projects? Put 
this over here like this and use these two to hold it. There we go. That might work. Yes, we're working on a doll sweater just to show you the technique of making a sweater from start to finish. And I'll probably give this to my sister. She makes um, those baby dolls, the tall baby dolls. I think they're called Molly dolls. And she, I've been talking to her about making some sweaters for her to have for her dolls. And I want to do some color work sweaters to really jazz them up. And uh, just getting around to it. And we're working on the back piece here. We took measurements. Actually, I didn't take measurements. I just figured eight inches around. Her dolls are probably a little bit bigger than that. But it should be enough. We'll try it out and see. If not, I'll make it bigger. But we'll have a little baby doll sweater. Um, if you're first starting out, um, I in you know, I would recommend the worsted weight yarn, which is on the label, it'll say four. It'll have a number four on a little uh, skein of yarn on the label. And with that, it, it requires um, a U.S. 7, 8, or 9 knitting needle. Um, I always go with an 8, the middle one. Um bigger needles bigger yarn is easier to work with to see your stitches I would not recommend starting with black yarn because it becomes very hard to see your stitches knitting it's not so bad because you have your stitches on the needle crochet it is it's hard to see So net you say you have you can cast on and cast off and you're pretty fluent with the knit or the purl stitch you said. Yeah, crocheting. I'm telling you if somebody makes you a knit, knitted or crocheted uh item out of black, they love you. They love you to death. Because it's really it, it's you have a lot of black yarn. <laughs> Oh, uh, thanks for the share, Brooks. Yeah, it is hard working with black yarn. My friend Brooks is on here. Yeah, guys need to check her out. She's starting a um, she's uh doing up some crochet hooks. She has them in her Etsy shop. Get Crafty Brooks. She's um, actually um, putting some listings up today. Yeah, simple squares like forever. Um, I have a book with 750 knit stitches. And it breaks down how to do um, cables, uh, lace, um textures all kinds of textures yeah yeah it's my favorite color but it is hard to work with when you have to see what's going on what's going on I'm not quite sure how long I'm gonna make this but uh, for the knitters, the, the the beginner knitters, and the ones who have been knitting for a little while who are here. Good morning, Billy. And um, I'm going to, most of the patterns when you do a sweater, unless it's like a raglan sweater where it's knitted top down. And, you know, you do your increases and things like that, which I could do some like that for my sister as well. Do the math on those and figure those out. But we've got a nice little panel starting here. And I'm just wondering. I did have, yeah, it's right here. Just wondering, as far as a baby doll, 
probably only about four inches. So we're going to do about four inches. I have another tape measure taped down to the bottom of my desk because I like to just be able to lay my work down and, you know, look at it real quick and keep going. So we're going to do about four inches here. Oh, <laughs> just began a week ago. Who was that? Oh, Billy. Is it crochet or knitting? Just began knitting. There we go. If I'd read it. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you found me, Net, because I'm I'm here. I'd like to help. My mother taught me to crochet when I was nine, and I think I was about 11 or 12 when she taught me how to knit. Um, she took all the patience in the world with me, and normally when I learn something for free, I share it for free. You know, this is something that somebody took their time to teach me, which time, time is valuable. So... You know, I'm taking my time to share my skill. So I, I just kind of keep the skill going. Uh, I don't want it to become, you know, a dead art. Something that they used to do that nobody does anymore. And after over 40 years of actually crocheting and knitting, this year is the first year that I've actually made something for myself. And I felt guilty doing it. I felt guilty doing it. And I made so many mistakes. So many mistakes. Had to go back and forth and take it out and redo it and finally got it done but when I'm making it for somebody else I can pretty much just work right through it without too many issues as long as I pay attention sometimes as you know more seasoned knitters we're like okay and we kind of fly by the seat of our pants and don't pay attention and that's when we make big mistakes big mistakes I made a sweater for myself and um, the back piece was to the size that I was making. And the two front pieces were um, from a size that was like two sizes down. I had to pull 39 inches of workout on both front pieces. So that was 39 times two. Yeah, I cried. I cried. <laughs> Well, let we're here to teach you. Are you working on the comfiest cardigan with us in class? I think you were the one who had said you wanted to make a sweater. It might have been you. It's hard for me to keep up with everybody. Yeah, it was. Uh, you all were right along with me, weren't you, Brooks? Watching me pull that sweater back out. Oh, I cried. And I posted every last bit of it on, Inst uh, not Instagram, but right here on TikTok. Not the crying portion. Uh, I kept that to myself. Yeah, I am. Um, I have a an Addy knitting machine, and I used it to make up a bunch of hats. I was donated yarn, and normally when I get donations of yarn, I use that to make projects, and I donate them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I made a bunch of hats, and I gave them to one of my co-workers' daughters who wanted to start up her own little charity to help feed the homeless. She was six years old when she wanted to start this and her father supported her. I think she's about nine or ten years old now and it was about two years ago and I wanted to get a bunch of hats done up for her really really quickly and um, the Addy Knitting Machine helped me make nine hats a day and they were reversible and I actually did like a roll up brim on these toboggan hats to where you would have four different hats in one depending on how you folded it. 
Yeah, they teach you to have patience, um, discipline. Um, if you're actually making your own patterns, um, math. Um, and they've actually proven that knitting and crocheting actually um, causes more brain activity than not crafting. And I think that... Um, I think that in one of the studies it says that it was the only thing that you actually used both sides of your brain for. But don't quote me on that. Making patterns, yes. I have um, two patterns that I've done up this year. I have to get them wrote up. And I'm trying to, I think I might just stick with a blog and post all my stuff to a blog. I really want to get a website done, but that costs money. So I'm trying to keep everything as cost effective and low as I can. I know everybody, everybody's having problems now, so... But yeah, if you're new and you want to learn and you're not sure if it's something that you'll really like, um, the Dollar Tree, uh, my local Dollar Tree, is starting to sell some yarn and crochet or knitting needle. That's I've seen. I haven't seen any crochet hooks yet. Um, but you can you can find some you know relatively inexpensive if you want to try, and you're not sure. Um, you don't have to have the high dollar crochet hooks and knitting needles. Just starting out, I started out off of the boy hooks. I really don't like the style of the hook. I like the Susan Bates better because it gives you a nice clear hook for holding onto the yarn. And as far as the knitting needles, I don't think it really mattered when I started out what they were as long as they were the right size for what I needed. What's what's that that makes so much sense, Net? Oh goodness. Yeah, um some of my friends have bought some of the um I don't know if it's like a Chanel from the Dollar Tree. A really soft, velvety looking yarn. I have so much yarn. Oh, I don't know. You guys have to check out some of my um, some of my videos. Um, you'll see my yarn stash, which is <laughs> directly behind me. It goes two thirds the way up the wall. So I really don't need to buy any. I just need to figure out what I want to make with all that's over there. Oh, a bag with the Chanel yarn? Yeah, I bet you that was really pretty. Let's see here. I think we got about two and a half inches here. And we'll keep going. Now, as I was saying, most, if you're looking at a sweater pattern, most sweaters have you do, most patterns have you do the sweater in pieces where you have a back piece, a front, two front pieces, and two sleeves. And then you put it all together later, you know, sew it all together and then do the collar band, which goes up the front around the neck and down the other side with buttonholes if you so choose. Or you can also use those little wooden toggle type buttons. Um, you know, you can customize it however you want. But most patterns have you do it in pieces. I'm going to show you here how you don't have to stop at the back piece and you can keep doing the front piece. Um, it does require for you to have two skeins of yarn going at the same time or leaving stitches. I'm going to put them on a stitch marker and show you because I don't want to confuse you thoroughly. But we're going to get up here to that point here in a few minutes where we're going to divide for the front pieces. And I shouldn't have an issue getting this done. 
by 10 or 1030. And I'm leaning on this table and it's shaking the camera. Yeah. But we're just going to work this up to the four inch point. And then I'll show you how I divide for the fronts. And I might work them both together that way, it make it a little bit quicker. Because then both the fronts will be done at the same time. And then I'll show you also how I connect the sleeves directly on to those pieces without. And then all I actually have to seam up is down the arm and down the side. So it's one long seam that I can do. And we're just going to work over to the other side. And we've got a pretty good bit of people in here watching. This is something that you can do um, if you have girls that have baby dolls. You can make doll clothes for her babies, and she will love you to death. But the babies will never have the doll clothes on. I know um, anybody who has children out there, there's a toy box full of Barbies with no clothes. <laughs> and we buy them clothes. But yeah, you can make clothes for their babies. You can make clothes for the Barbies, too. Um, if you wanted to make a Barbie sweater, I would say go down to a, a really smaller, smaller yarn, like a size one, and make the sweater with that. Um, worsted weight, your sweater's not going to, it's going to look like a really, really boxy, chunky sweater on Barbie. But for the other baby dolls, and I wished I had metal needles of this size. I have to use a circular needle because I have limited space. When I try to use straights in the amount of space that I'm doing here to be able to see my comments and be able to see my work and not have to watch it through the camera, which can be pretty oof, dizzying. Let me get a good look at this here and see how much we've got here. We've got three and a half inches now. Probably about two or three more rows, and I will show you how... We will divide this for the fronts. Now, as I said, we were going to do an 8-inch around doll. So that put 4 inches on the back and 4 inches on the front. Um, you can do the measurements the same here. Um, for yourself, if you wanted to make a sweater, you measure around the widest part of your torso. And you divide that measurement by two because half of it goes in the front, the other half goes in the back. Then you look at your yarn label. You've got to make sure that your gauge matches. You do a gauge swatch, which if it's stockinette stitch like this in the pattern, you'll do a four inch by four inch square and measure that and see how many stitches make an inch. Um, I can show you that for the new knitters. Um, this here will help you with the knitting gauge. It also will measure your needles if you have needles like this that don't have any markings on them. Actually, I think this one does have markings on it because it's a clover. But if you have any that don't have markings in it, you can use this to measure your needles as well. But you lay your work down flat and you put this in here. Line it up with a row of stitches here, and then you count over how many stitches you have to make an inch, and that's how many you multiply that by your measurement, and that's how many stitches you need. Um, it works very well for blankets. If you want to make a knitted blanket, um, you have maybe not a pattern, but you have a a knit stitch idea that you want to use in that blanket, you can use that same math for the blanket. How you doing this morning, Has a Life? I'm going to do this, and I think I'm going to have to do two more rows. I'll measure this after I get this one done, because when I'm going to do the front pieces, I want to make sure that I'm on the knit side, because I don't want to do them on the purl side. 
So we're going to have to bind off some stitches in the middle for the neck. Again, we'll get back to the measurement count that I was talking about. We are doing um, four inches on the back. So we had to take the four inches that we had left over from the eight inches in total to put that on the front side. Now the front, we're going to have an open cardigan. So the front side has to be divided in half. So that's two inches on each side. Plus we need to subtract a half inch from each one of those to allow for the collar band. And let me measure this real quick. We might be close enough to where I can... I think I need a couple more rows. Yeah, we're almost, we're three and three quarters. So we're gonna do two more rows. Actually three more rows, because I need to be on the knit side. I don't have to be on the knit side to do it. I just like to because I don't like to bind off in the purl. I like to bind off in the knit. So I'm going to do three more rows and then we'll get to dividing for the fronts. So that you don't have to stop this piece as it says in the pattern. You know, as long as it's a basic sweater. Um, if you don't want shoulder seams, you can do this as well. Um, you do have to understand that the V's are going to look the same, but to a seasoned knitter, the V's would be going this way up the front. Now with this one, they're going to be going the same way down the front. It is a little different when you look at the pieces, but unless you're a seasoned knitter, you really wouldn't know. And I'm going to check this again. I might not have to do two more rows, but I might anyway, just because I really want this closer to four inches. I don't want to go over too far. And when we're doing this other side, we're going to use the back side to measure it up to to make sure that we are even. And we want to make sure to stop in time for the ribbing on the fronts too. Let me give this a quick measure again here. This circular needle makes it hard to get everything out of the way. And we have four inches there. Okay, now we know that it's six stitches per inch and we need our fronts to be the determined number of an inch and a half. So six inches is, a, is an inch. Three inches will give us our half. So our fronts have to be nine stitches. Nine stitches here and nine stitches over here. These stitches here in the middle, we are going to bind off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I always mark, and I don't have my stitch markers out here. I'm gonna have to count that up again. I always mark it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right here. So that way I know where to stop casting off. You need to do this because if you don't, your collar band is not going to have the space it needs to lay flat behind your neck. It's going to V up because you're not going to have a neck to put a collar band on and I'm trying to play tiddlywinks with my stitch markers. All right, so we are going to knit nine of these stitches and then we're gonna cast off whatever's left over to here and then we're gonna knit these nine stitches. And We will have it divided for our fronts. Seven, eight, 
and nine. Nine stitches for the right front. Now we are going to bind these off. Okay, so I'm going to do that one, that one. When you bind off, you take the stitch and you wrap it right over. I don't know if any of you, and I'm probably going to um, tell everybody just exactly how old I am, if anybody has used one of those square weaving looms to make pot holders. It's pretty much the same technique as that. You are going to knit your stitch, and you're going to take the stitch behind it and cross it over it, and it secures those stitches off. Okay, and we are going to make sure that we also, this one here, we're going to make sure that we bind this one off too as well because we only want nine stitches here. This would make ten. So we take our marker off. We are going to knit this one and bind this one off. I always double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this would make nine. So that gives us our inch and a half that we need on the front. Okay? Now, you're going to say, well, how do we get back over here to this? And I'm going to show you how we get back over there to that, because I'm going to work both these fronts at the same time so I have the same amount of rows. Sometimes laying it over and measuring it back down to here, you end up with an extra row or not enough rows. So we're going to work them together. Okay. So we're going to turn this over to the other side, just like we're going to start the, the next row. And we're going to purl these nine. And um, Brooks, if you're still watching, this is exactly how I did my sweater. Um... I don't like doing a lot of extra sewing. And this gives you um, a sweater without shoulder seams. Some people get bothered by the seams. Now, this is where a second skein of yarn comes in. Or, if you're talented enough, and I don't like doing this, um, work it from the outside of the skein and the inside of the skein. Um, it gets too tangled up for me that way. So I have an extra cake and we are going to use this one. And the way I start this off is... Oof, I missed that knot when I caked it up, didn't I? Don't knot back up. I used to knot my yarn up something terrible when I was younger, and my mother, she would say, give it here, and <laughs> she would untangle it for me. She loved me to death. All right, where's our end for this one? All right, we're going to take this yarn, and I'm going to just do it like this. don't have to do it really long because it's only nine stitches, but I'm going to do a little loop just like this, and I'm just going to hold it like that. I'm going to lay this string to the back for this one because we don't want to use that one. We don't want strings going across here. Okay, we're going to put this in here as if to purl. We're going to take our little loop and put it on there just like that. And we are going to work that right through there. Okay, there's our first stitch. Now, like I said, because I like to weave in as I work, I'm going to hold both of these and I'm going to use those to do my next maybe two or three stitches, okay? And then we are going to drop that little extra and we will weave that in when we get done, okay? And we're just going to continue on here. And we are going to work these nine stitches on each side um, to the measurement of where we stop doing our rib down here on the bottom because we're going to want that rib to continue to the front. Okay, so now we're going to turn this over again, and you just have to make sure that you don't confuse your, your yarns. Now, one thing that I did notice when you keep turning and then turning again this way for the next row, that it will 
twist these together. If you turn it this way and then turn it back this way for the next row, you won't twist your yarns together. All right, we're going to work these nine knits. And we're going to be careful because this is the one where we added because we're going to come up where it looks like we have two stitches. Okay, but they're both still in the same stitch here. So we have to work those together. That was from where we wove in that little bit of tail from adding this on. Okay. Now, don't worry about that. That will even itself out. Okay. Drop that one, and we're going to pick this one up. Bring it to the back side. And we're going to work these nine. And we're going to do this back and forth until we have enough to make it back down to that rib. And I'll show you how we how I measure that when I get down there. I can measure it by the tape measure. And you see this is going to cross my yarn, but that's okay because when we get done, we're going to turn it back the other way and it will uncross it. Now we're doing the pearls. Mm, we're doing pretty good. I'll show you how you pick up stitches too for the collar band. And this probably would have been an easier way to go than doing that comfiest cardigan, but I wanted to make one of those for my mother. So, hence that. All right, this gets a little fiddly here. There we go. Into the stitch. And you see you have a neck area here. If you don't give space for that, then your collar band comes up and it goes straight back out like a V. And it will not lay flat. Will not. So when you do your math to divide for your fronts, like I said, the back we did four inches. So there was four inches to divide for the two front pieces. And see, I've turned and now the yarn is untangled again. Um... Four inches for the front piece, divide that in half, that's two inches a piece, plus however much your collar band is, you need to subtract that amount, which I only want a half inch of collar band, so we're going to take a half inch off of two, so that gives us a half an, an inch and a half for each front for this little doll sweater. Oh, drop that one, pick this one up. Knit across. Shouldn't take me too long to knit four inches. It's not that many rows and it's not that many stitches. Brooks, I think I'm going to get this done before time. All right. Pearl back across these. Anybody here working on any projects of their own? Anybody doing any knit projects or any crochet projects? Yeah. You question my excellence. What are you talking about, Brooksy? You didn't think I knew what I was talking about? I don't think I'm excellent. You're knitting a hat. Oh, don't start that now. Doing so good. I'm <laughs> not thinking I could get it done by 1030. Okay, we got somebody who's crocheted daisies. I bet you those are beautiful. Two king size blankets. Oh, Net, you've got your hands full. And Billy, you're you're starting on on knitting, new to knitting. Well, I'm here every Tuesday from eight to ten. I won't be here this Tuesday. I have a health appointment, and I do teach knitting and crocheting in the same class. We do half knit, half crochet. And um, anybody who wants to come, it's free. 
um, yeah, come join us. We are working on the comfiest card again. I'm probably going to um, take that as a, 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 a side live as a different day. That way I don't take the knitting class up for, you know, just the card again. Um, teach everybody the basics. And we'll start on, you know, the knit and the pearl, and we'll do projects to master that. Small projects that we can, you know, accomplish within the time allotted. That way you guys have a finished project. Um, as we get more detailed, you know, with um, increases and decreases would be the next thing I would teach after knit and pearl basics, which is just mastering the stitches and, and working on your tension. Um you know, and then increases and decreases. Again, I try to keep the project small so that you finish it within the time allotted. So if you want to try to make another one, you can. Or if you have other projects that you're working on, you know, it just it keeps you going. Um, I know with crafting, a lot of instant gratification will keep you going. So I try to keep the projects on a smaller scale, which I probably should have showed this card again to begin with, done it this way, because it shows the technique of, you know, working the whole card again and how I can avoid um, a lot of sewing. I don't like to sew. Um, as far as the class, you just have to show up. Um, I do them Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, this Tuesday, like I said, um, I won't be available for class because oof, I'm getting tangled up here. Um, I have an appointment that I have to keep. I have to take care of my health. So, um, I'll, I'll do extra lives or whatever. I'll be there probably live pretty much all week if anybody needs help, but we'll resume class, not this week, but next week. But I will be on live all week long doing little things. I have to find another little thing that I can show you that works up quick so you can see the, uh, technique here and as I've commented before there's no one right way to knit there's no one right way to hold your needles or your yarn it all depends on the crafter and how they feel comfortable um, everybody does it a little different so there's no wrong way I just show you the there's multiple ways that I hold the yarn depending on what technique I'm doing. And I was going to try and show some color work. So, and the reason why I have to be off by a certain time is my husband calls to check on me on his lunch break and we chat. But um I might come back after and just show you some of the things that I'm working on and work on some of those here on the live. I have a color work sweater that I need to do a couple rows on. So I haven't touched it for a couple of weeks. You want to make a card again. Thanks, Brooks, for sharing that info. Yeah, um, if you want to work a card again um, and, and you're new to knitting, Nina, if you're new to knitting and you want to work a cardigan, um, the comfiest cardigan would be the best one for you to start on. Um, I do have a link um, in my bio for that one. Um, we are working on that in class, and this is actually kind of the basics of what I'm doing now here. It's pretty much the same pattern, just in a smaller scale. And... The way I measure this when I do it like this, you can see here that I have the back piece up to where I've bound off. These two fold down right at that and become 
the two front pieces. And I'm about halfway there now. I want to get down to this section right here because I want to leave enough to do that ribbing as well. Another thing that I could do, and I can show you how to count your rows as well by doing this because I'd have to do that many rows on the other side. And that might be helpful. Um, give me just a minute here. I needed to get a little sip of some caffeine because probably should have ate a little bit before I started this this morning, but that's okay. And everything that I'm looking for is not right here because I wanted to have something dark. Here we go. We've got a little hair chopstick. And I have knitted with this before too. <laughs> All right. We're going to come down here to where we did this knit and purl, and I'm going to bring this in and hopefully it will focus in better and you can see these little V's that go vertically up a row that is a vertical row of knitting right there in those V's and I'm going to come over here to this one and we are going to start right here because yeah we're going to take this one right here let's see if I can't get that to come in a little bit better but what I do is I count the little holes that you can see in there. One, two, three, four, five. And that's not looking really good here. Six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Twenty-four. 25. We did 25 rows up the back. So I need to do 25 rows down the front or measure from here to here from the neck to where I started that, which is maybe two or three rows more than three inches because that rolled back down there. So it's three and a quarter. Okay. So we're just going to continue on with this here and it won't take me but a few minutes to get that down to um, where we need it to be. And keep going. And this stuff right here I've knitted for so long I feel I know where stuff is. I um, feel for my next stitch. I was showing some of the technique that I do. We got us wrapped around here. I don't like it wrapped around in there. All right. Well, it's just going to have to be wrapped around in there for now because it's stuck. But we'll we'll get through it. And that just made me lose my train of thought. Get that out from there. Now, there we go. Turn it the other way. Keep my strings untangled. Oh, I know where I was going with that. Um, what do you guys listen to while you're knitting? Do you binge watch TV? I can actually watch TV and do this, not even look at my work. I'm actually looking to see if there's any comments currently. Because I can feel my stitches when I'm doing this. This finger is pushing it off, this finger is pushing it up, this one's stopping, and this one's pushing this all at the same time. So it's kind of like, if you watch my fingers, a little mechanical machine going on over here. And I can feel that, feel the next stitch. I'm actually so sensitive in the feeling in my fingers, I can feel a knit stitch and a purl stitch. I can feel the difference between the two. But 
But I like to listen to music. I like to listen to music playing in the background. Not real loud. Right now I'm listening to the birds outside. I love it. Birds are out here chirping all over again. Straight out of spring into summer. I don't think we've had a real spring for years. Alright, let's just lay this down here and see how much we've got. We've got about two inches. Always measure under the needle because these stitches do um, tighten up a little bit as you go through. So we'll get these all tangled up. Got about an inch and a quarter to go. Which isn't too much. We're using sport weight yarn today. I had picked out a smaller yarn, but it would have taken me longer to do. We would have needed more rows. And I didn't want to go with the worsted weight yarn, which is um, normally the red heart that you see in Walmart. Um, oops. That wasn't locked down. Let's lock that down. There we go. I sent you all for a ride. I hit the little arm that holds my phone over my table and didn't have it locked down. But again, for anybody coming in, we are making a baby doll sweater. <coughs> This will go around a baby doll that is about eight inches around. I've done the back and I have divided for the front so I don't have to do a whole lot of sewing. This is a technique that you can use on a sweater that says you have to do it in pieces. Um, I like this too when you're doing a sweater that has detail in it. You can continue the detail. There's no seam that cuts it off in half to where you have to start over again. Um, I especially like it this way because you don't have to do a whole lot of sewing. Don't have to do a whole lot of sewing. Do, do. You can actually knit a panel. If you're better at knitting panels, you can knit up a gorgeous panel and take it and, um, lay a pattern on it just like a sewing machine pattern and you can cut that right out and stitch it together on the sewing machine you have to be careful not to pull it when you cut it apart um, I have done blankets like that where um, it had um, intarsia knitting in it it had a um, two color pattern and I knitted it in the round because I didn't want to purl and then when I got done, it's called a steek. You stitch up both sides of two purl stitches that you put between the right side and the left side. And then you sew it. You sew it with the sewing machine. And I um, added a satin blanket border to it that you can um, purchase separate. I don't know if you remember. that A lot of the blankets don't have it now, but the blankets in... Um, when I was younger, they had a nice little satiny, like a bias tape. And let me check and see where we're at now with this. I'm actually going to fold it down here so I can see. Oh, yeah, we have about a, about a good inch to go yet. Maybe another four or five rows. But yeah, that satiny bias tape I put around that blanket on the edges where I cut, not all the way around, because I had a um, garter stitch edge at the top at the and bottom so it wouldn't roll. Because knitting, as you can tell, if you don't put an edging on it, it'll roll right up like a little tube. So we've got an inch left to do. Thank you for the follows and the likes. Welcome everyone. New knitters, seasoned knitters. 
Um, I do a class on Tuesday if anybody's interested. All are welcome. It is absolutely free. And it's right here on TikTok Live. This Tuesday there won't be a class though. I'll try to make sure to be repetitive but not too repetitive. New people coming in when I see the stuff moving a, a good bit. And I'll repeat some of the things that I've already said. Just so they know what's going on and what I'm doing and when I'm here. Um, I might try, and I don't know how well this will work out, so I'm just kind of going with the flow right now. But I might try to schedule. Did I do that other side or did I just turn it? Yeah, I did it. Um, I might schedule live so you know when I'm coming and what I'm doing. Um, I might be on here later today working on something else. So hubby decided to work overtime today. And I think I probably will, but I'll need a little break to get something to eat and make sure I take my medicine and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that was something else I was supposed to do, too. My dog needs her pills, so that I absolutely have to do. Um, Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> this Tuesday, though, I will not be here. I have a, a health appointment, um, but I'll probably come on later. It's not too late. Normally during the week, I'm only available until 3 in the afternoon um, to do lives and to help teach. Probably got all off and tangled up, but we'll be all right. But yep, everybody is welcome. <clears throat> um, I try to have posted in a video by Sunday night what we're going to do. Um, I try to keep everything to the same size hook or needle that um, we started out with. Um, I do tend to do it with a smaller needle just because. And yeah, we're going to we'll do crochet for an hour, knit for an hour. Um, Pretty much just doing the basics now. We did have some more seasoned knitters that wanted help with the cardigan, how to do a cardigan. I know it, it's kind of intimidating when you try to, you know, you're self-taught and things like that. But I'm here to help pattern-wise, anything. I've went to my mother a whole lot for pattern help, pattern help. She knew I was getting... um Okay, we just did that. We need to do this one again in the pearl. Um, disgusted as a child with it, and she actually wrote out a complete knitting pattern, took all the abbreviations out of it, and wrote it out completely so that I could read it. And what she did was she put the abbreviation in parentheses behind the word. So I was seeing that and associating that with the word, and she only had to do it. Uh, two or three times before I caught on and I could do a pattern by myself and I'm willing to do that if that's what you know it takes for someone I have assisted with lines of pattern um, and I will help anybody hand knitting socks um, we can actually work on some of that in class. I can also do a live. Um, I have a book, If Knitting in the Round is Intimidating to You, where you can make socks and you knit them flat. Um, I will probably do a video and show some of that. Um, I'm just trying to think of a sock pattern because I haven't done too many socks, but the pattern that I used for the Converse slipper sneakers, if you've seen that video in my profile, 
Uh, that seemed to be one of the easiest ones to do. Um, and it is called the Reverse, R-E-A-V-E-R-S-E -E -E, uh, pattern. Um, I think I found it on Pinterest, and it might be a link to Ravelry. Most of my patterns come from Pinterest or Ravelry. Um, I haven't done too many line brand patterns here lately. We're going to check this again now. See where we are with this. And at this point, you can see I've got it right back down here to where my ribbing is. Um, I am going to go ahead and do the ribbing. So we will have the front, the two fronts and the back done in, well, it's only been, what, an hour and 20 minutes? Not quite, because I didn't start at 7. How about that, Brooks? I had doubters. I had doubters. All right, so we're going to do a knit two, purl two rib, and we only have nine stitches here. So we are going to have an extra purl. So when we switch it over to do the other side, we have to make sure to be careful of that. So here we're going to start with two knits and then two purls. I'm going to do two knits and two purls. One thing that you can do if you want to make it even, and I'm probably going to go ahead and do that, I'm going to knit in the front and back of this. This is one of the increases that you use for knit. It's called knit front back. It'll say KFB. Okay, so we're going to go in to do a regular knit stitch and do our knit. And then we're not going to swipe this off. We are going to come back in here and we are going to catch the back loop like this. And we are going to knit that. Okay. Um, some of the sweaters, and I probably should have done this on the pearl side. You wouldn't have seen these. These little pearl dashes. If you start this, well, it probably would have purled it all the way across. There is a way to keep from seeing these little pearl dashes. To my recollection, it won't come to my brain right now. Um, I'll describe that later. But a lot of the patterns when you are do a ribbing and it's an even number, sometimes you have to add or subtract stitches when you start in here. Because this requires, if it's a pattern, requires more stitches than what? If you give the title of that book for knitting socks with straight needles. Um, let me finish this other side so I don't get this turned around and not do this row on here. And I have it right over here on my bookshelf. I'll pull it right out for you. Two knits. Two purls. Two knits. And it's got a lot of little delicate socks in there too. Um, two purls. I will also put a link in for the flat sock, and in here we're doing our knit front back increase to give us an even count. Let me show you that book here very quickly. Oh. Is called knit your socks on straight knit your socks on straight and it's by Alice Curtis I'll go through here very quickly and I will show you some pictures here of the socks that they have in here it does give you a little bit of an intro the heels wedge toe Closing the seams and all of that stuff. Um, here's a pair of the socks that it does in there. Those are done on straight needles. Um, let's see here. And they called these jelly beans. And just so you know all the socks that are in here and those pretty much look all the same here's some that you can wear with flip-flops you've got a big toe in them 
and they're knitted flat on straight needles. Um, there's some here that actually have some cabling, cabling stitches in there. Um, let's see what else. Here's some with some kind of like a textured pattern on the top. Let's see what else here. This one has some um, ribbing in it. And again, these are all knitted on straight needles. Um, here's some really neat ones. They've got a little textured maybe. Yeah, that's textured. And then again, some more cabling. And let's see. Oh, and they have some um, moccasins in here that you can do. Again, all on flat needles. Um, these are little, they call these blue jeans. And let's see. They have these in here. These, I really like those. They have a little button on a, a cuff here. A lot of detail in the top sides of the socks. Um, these are called gingerbread and snowmen. There was a couple more in here that I didn't show too much because they were pretty much the same design. You have some color work. And you have these here. All worked flat. And these <laughs> tuxedo socks. But yeah, um, I don't know if you can, let's see if we can get that to focus in there. Give you the ISBN number that's on the book. I don't know if it's still in print. I've had these books for a long, long time. But yes, this is um, Alice Curtis. Uh, knitting Around the World, this is a different book. This is Knitting Your Socks on Straight. If you have an aversion to knitting in the round, you can still make socks on straight needles. I also have one where you can knit them. They, they almost come out like slipper socks, especially if you make them in worsted weight. Um, I have a link and I will put it in there for straight socks in my bio when I get off the live. And um, it is a free pattern on Pinterest. And um, it'll be there for everybody. Um, that might be something that we can do in knit classes, make a pair of socks. Um, that would be more for the... We're going to make sure that we're doing the right one. we got to do pearls here. And... Um, that might be something we do in knit classes. Make a flat sock. So I know I could probably get through one in an hour doing it flat. I'm going to show you the increases and the decreases to make the sock and then how to seam it up. Um, and, and as far as class, I'm trying to get it to where I'm teaching you what you want to learn. Um, I don't want to really be teaching you something that, okay, well, I don't want to learn that. And then you don't stick around, and then uh, something that you do want to learn, we do next, and, you know. So pretty much I want to detail the class towards what, you know, the people in the class want to learn. So that way, you know, new knitters, seasoned knitters, they all get a little bit of both. And what I might do during the week to help break it up a little bit is um, after Tuesday go through and have a 
new knitter class and a seasoned knitter class. Well, not actually a class, but just do a live to where it's basically dedicated to the new knitters. And, you know, try and get it to where I can accommodate everybody's schedule. Now, if you do miss a live class, I do post all of my live classes to my YouTube, which is under the Yarnologist. Um, link for that is in my bio as well for YouTube. Um, as soon as I get off, I, uh, it has to process the live. And then I download it and it immediately goes up on YouTube. So if you do miss a class or if you do want to see a repeat of what I've done, you can do that on YouTube. I got to check and see how many rows I did on this rib. I think I only did about four. And then we can bind both of these off. And then from that point, I'm going to show you how I calculate and attach my sleeves. One, two, three, four. We did four. One, two, three. So we have to do one more. And then we can cast off which will be lovely because then I can lay this out and show you because that's how I'm going to pick up the stitches and I'm not going to knit the sleeve separate no I'm going to pick up stitches right along the side of this fabric and make the sleeves and I'm going to leave the sleeves pretty boxy because they're not going to be that long so there's not going to be a need for a whole lot of decreases It'll just be more so of a um, kimono style um, sleeve. Now, when you bind off a rib pattern, you want to, and it will tell you in the pattern, bind off in pattern. If you don't, I'm going to show you what you're going to get. Okay, you will have this long line right along the bottom of your sweater. And it doesn't look like this. So when they meet, when we sew it together, you will have this great big right in your face. So what I do when I cast off, I will knit Okay, two knits, cast off, bring my yarn around the front to do the purls, cast off in pattern. So if it's a purl stitch, you need to purl it. Okay, now casting the part off, it doesn't matter what that stitch was, you're still going to cast off in purl style if you're doing a purl in a knit fashion if you're doing a knit. Okay. Yarn to the back because the next two stitches are knits because of the V's here. So we are going to knit that one, cast that one off, knit that one, cast that one off. And you see how it's giving you a flat edge just like at the other side. Now if we would have knit straight across and cast it off like that, it would have given you an edge like on the neckline. Now, as far as the neckline, when we do our collar band, it is, oh, I'm going to cover that up because I'll show you when we pick up the stitches, it will be in the seam. You won't see it. Okay, now what I normally do for this is I pull that a little bit longer and I didn't have it out and ready. Grab me a little. I'm going to hold of it without a struggle. A smaller size crochet hook. You don't have to use a crochet hook. You can do it through your hands, but I will do a two little chain. And, wow, I can't even find my scissors. My little gold scissors. Give it a cut. Oof, sorry about that. That was the magnet on top of there that grabbed my scissors. I don't know why I have a magnet on top of my lid for my things but I do. Was that loud? 
All right, so we've got this one done. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cast this one off. Let's see which yarn we're still hooked to. That way we can get some of this out of the way. There we go. We are going to get this turned around the right way. Get our yarn loose here. And we're going to go ahead and bind this one off again. I'm going to knit, knit, take this one over top of that one. Now we're going to go to the purl. When I'm purling, I grab it from behind and pull it over. It doesn't matter which side you grab it from. It's just easier to me from behind because you don't have this yarn in your way. Just grab it, stitch up, drag it right over top of the other one. Now we're back to two knits. And then we'll do two more purls. We are making a baby doll sweater today. I see I've got a couple more people joining in. I'm doing this just to show the technique that I use because I don't like sewing. So when the pattern tells you to make the backs and the fronts and the sleeves separate, I say, nope, I don't want to. And I sew it. I don't like sewing. Not hand sewing anyway, especially yarn. Pull that down. And then you can see your edge here. You've got a nice, it's a nice flat from the bottom view. And it goes right along with this. That's because we did it in pattern. Otherwise, you would have this at the bottom of your, and it would, it would lay just like that. It wouldn't turn up. It would lay. So always cast off in pattern. Now we have our fronts and our back and it's all connected together. This is the general construction of a sweater. So at this point try to do baby booty somehow I ended up having more stitches. Oh yeah I've, I've knitted baby booties and um yeah, sometimes you do. You just have to be careful. Um, sometimes you drop stitches. Um, I've noticed sometimes, too, even as a season knitter, when I weave my end in when I first start working and I've got those two strands, I've separated them and I've ended up with extra stitches, too. Um, you just have to be mindful of how the stitches are being done and, you know, follow the directions. Sometimes that's the hardest part because you're like, oh, I know how to do this. And you go on and on and you've made a boo-boo because you didn't follow the directions. That's my main thing because I like to fly by the seat of my pants. So now we are going to pick up stitches to make our sleeves. Now, most sweater patterns, normal, you know, just plain old sweater patterns, not any with any bat wing bell sleeve or anything like that, they will take up two-thirds of the edge of your sweater because your the upper portion of your arm is the widest portion of your arm and it only takes up a certain area so just because this is a doll sweater we're not going to go real specific with the measurements and stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of mark it with the stitch marker here and we're going to say that the bottom of the arm or the sleeve should be about right there because it's a doll where the arm sticks straight out and I might bring that down a little bit more it's it's just play two-thirds you don't want to go past the halfway mark because you don't want your sleeve that big and I will come over here and I will do the same thing and I'm gonna to have to roll this out because knitting likes to roll up and I need to get another stitch marker out. And then we'll also oof, lay it flat and look and see how it looks once we get these on here. Doo -doo. And I'm doing this based off the comfiest cardigan that we are currently working on in class. And not actually paying attention to any pattern. It's just measurements 
and putting things in order. Okay, so that looks like where the sleeve would lay on a sweater in between those in this area here. So now we're going to lay this out flat. And we're going to look and see that we have some of the front and some of the back. And I think the back might have gotten a little lower. What I can actually do is count the stitches from this blue line here because that is the first line that I did on the front piece here and see how many we have. So let's look and see how many knits we have to this stitch marker here. We have, and we're going to count this blue row too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we're going to count and make sure that it's 11 back from this blue line here, not counting it because we counted that for the front. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And it is off by a little, so we're going to move this stitch marker. And we're just evening things up, making sure everything is even because we don't we want our seam under the arm we don't want it up the back side or hanging halfway in the middle of the front side so what I do at this point is I go through here and I pick up stitches okay um, let me move some of this out of the way or I'm going to have this all stick into my arm and dropping on the floor I dropped all my dumped all my stitch markers out on the desk I keep them in a little jar a little ketchup jar crafters. I've got a, a large cookie tin full of buttons. Um, my mom used to use cookie tins for buttons too. Craft supplies. I don't know how many other people do that. The uh, thing that I keep most of my crochet hooks in is a candy tin. <laughs> but it keeps everything contained. I like to reuse stuff. I don't like to just throw everything away. All right, now, as far as picking up stitches, we're going to use our small one this time. To do, I don't have a whole lot of, I don't like having a whole lot of half-used skeins of yarn, so I'm try to use up what I have. We're going to start right here where this stitch is, and we are going to do our best to catch this outside row, both stitches, okay? going to try and show you here. You can see that I put that stitch marker through both the front and back leg of that knit stitch there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this through here so I can take this stitch marker out and we're going to make that little loop again like we did before. Just a little loop. Make sure you have enough that you can weave that yarn in later so you don't have it unraveling. And we're going to put that over, and it might make sense if I watch it instead of the camera. And we're going to run it right down to the very edge, and I'm going to hold this a little snug because I'm going to want to pull this through this material. Okay? And we are going to pick up a stitch in each one of these little V's all the way down to the stitch marker. And yes, I got two here because I'm weaving in my extra end as I go. And let's see where the next stitch is, right here. If you look right down this way at what I'm looking at here, I'll pull this here and show you. You see these little, this next little hole right here? And the next little hole, and the next little hole, that's where you're going to go in and you're going to make sure that you're picking up both legs of that stitch. Okay, and if you go straight through, you do have both legs of the stitch on there. I'm going to drop that extra right now because I only needed to do a couple of stitches. I'll weave in that extra later. And we're going to pick these up. And I'm only going to work a little short sleeve because I'm not sure how long the doll arms are on my sister's dolls. So I'm only going to work maybe about an inch and do a little short sleeve cardigan because that'll help me be able to reuse this again and not have to take it out and give it to my sister. And we're still picking up stitches. 
And when I get done picking them up, I will show you how this creates a nice, neat little seam on the inside if you pick up both legs of the stitch. Okay? If you don't pick up both legs of the stitch and you only catch like the back one, like this here, it'll put a big hole in the seam. Instead of it being all nice and neat and tidy, you will have a huge hole. So you need to make sure to grab both and it makes it nice and nice and tight, nice and secure. Um, when it gets washed, it doesn't um, make it bigger. Getting a little tight here with my stitches. That's why I'm having an issue getting this through here. There we go. And we're coming up on our stitch marker here. Just going to keep going. And I like doing it this way better because the seam is more uniform. Um, it's kind of hard for me sewing. Okay, and this is the last one, and we're going to go through both and take that stitch marker out. Do our last pickup. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make a little notation down here, 11 rows. Um, that's what I need to do for my sleeves, and it's 11 from the neckline. So that way, when I come back over on the other side, I can just come over to this first row that I did, which would start with this gray right here. And from there, i will come over to here and count 11, and then count 11, and this, the um, sleeves will be in the exact same spot. So at this point, we're going to turn our work and we're going to do our first purl row. But I will also show you when we get to ready to turn. When you pick them up properly, let me get my camera view here. This one row here, you will see a very crisp line between these two. You want to make sure not to catch one of these because then it, it makes your line wonky. But there is a very straight vertical line of stitches that you can visually see once you've picked your stitches up. On the back side, where we're going to do our purl, let me move this out of the way so we can see. You can see my seam there. Okay? You did grab a whole row, so you're going to have what you can feel is a little seam. But that's nice and sturdy and nice and neat, and it will be uniform all the way through. This side, this side, all the seams will all look the same. Okay, so I'm going to do about, I'm probably going to do maybe just two or three rows, and then we're going to do our um, a little rib on there, probably only two rows of rib too, because I don't want to make the sleeve too long. I just want to have like a little cap sleeve on here. And this will also help me with other sweaters to make for her. I might make some little pullover vests that she can put on them before she um, stuffs the, or even makes the head. But yeah, the dolls that she makes, they are adorable. She does uh, curly hair, braided hair. She did one with mohair, gray mohair. It looked like a little old lady. It was so cute. So cute. Okay, we've completed our first pearl row of stitches for our sleeve. And we're going to go ahead and do our knit row. Uh, this, is, this is years of knitting, years of knitting. And just taking the time to unroll that edge completely and be a little more patient with doing it. I will show you again because I have to do the other sleeve. It's only going to take me a couple of rows to do this and we'll get the other sleeve marked out. You have to make sure that you catch both the front and back leg or loop of the stitch and not catch the other row of stitches. And I will, I will definitely show you that again because, yeah, we do have another sleeve to do. And I'm going to stay on here until I get this finished. Um, it's just now going on 9 o'clock. 
Um, so actually, I have an hour and 45 minutes to finish the sweater, and I do not have, have any doubts that I can do that. Um, I'm going to work right on through here, doing the pearl row now. And again, this sweater is basically the comfiest sweater done on a smaller scale with math to bring it down because the comfiest sweater is a basic beginner knit as far as, you know, in my opinion. Um, the only shaping that there is in that actual pattern, and that pattern is um, mamainastitch.com on her website. Um, she does have a paid PDF ad-free pattern, but this one has ads in it and it is free. Um, there's also a link in my bio for that one as well. Um, I think that I'm going to go ahead and start doing the ribbing now. And I did one, two, three, four rows. I'm going to mark that down over here so we got the same on the other side. Four rows, then we'll do our three rows of rib and a cast off. Okay? So, we are going to go ahead and do our rib now. So we are going to knit two, purl two. I'm trying to pull some of this out here. Knit two, purl two. And we're going to do that for three rows. My mother said that I am very adventurous when it comes to knitting and crocheting. I will look at a pattern and I will add to it. I will either add a textured stitch where there is plain stitching or I will add color work. Um, I'm currently working on a couple of things and I'm going to be on here doing live so that you can see what I'm actually working on and how I've altered patterns to make the things that I want to make. And again here we're going to add a stitch for this ribbing just so or actually, no, I'm going to take a stitch away and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that because this is going to be under the arm. We're not going to miss it. And I want to have knit and pearls meet at my seam. So I'm going to take this last pearl stitch out and these last two we are going to purl together. Okay, this is a basic knit decrease. Yes, Mama in a Stitch does have some very, very nice patterns. So, in from the right and go through both stitches. Counterclockwise wrap. And we have just done a knit decrease, or purl decrease. Actually, it's just a basic decrease, but it was in the purl. Okay. So, now we're going to come back and do another row. Two knits. Two pearls. You're going to knit the knits and purl the pearls. For the new knitters, um, a knit stitch, you will see this little V in the stitch below it here. And we are going to knit those two, not purl them. Let's not confuse everybody. And the purl stitches, you will have what I call a dash that goes from, you know, that that's horizontal this way. Okay. That's how you can tell the difference in a knit stitch and a purl stitch. So finish this row up and we will do one more row of rib. I know I did four on the bottoms but we're only going to do three up here. And into the row. We're going to turn and do one more row of, let me take a look and see, we might not. Yeah, we're going to do one more row of rib because if we don't, you're really not going to see the ribbing. We might still do four rows of rib, I don't know. We'll look and see. See how it looks. I saw somebody do a video. Was that you, Felicia? making the, all of those squares, those tiny little squares with the um, sewing thread. I saw a video on TikTok the other day and I did save it and oh my goodness, all those tiny little granny squares. 
Yes, I've seen people do miniature knitting with, um, they actually use um, dress pins. Yeah. Oh, okay, we're supposed to knit now. Here I am talking away and looking at the comments, not really paying attention. See, that's where mistakes are made. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Yeah, oops, we made a boo-boo. Right back here, we did three pearls in a row. I'm going to go back and fix that because I'm just that OCD and it's in this row. My mother would have left it there. She said, you have to knit mistakes in for them to know it's handmade. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. What do we do here? Oh, further back. That's why it didn't look right. There's that third pearl right there. Okay. Two, two, two. Yep, we're good. We went back far enough. Two knits. In the next row, I'm going to go ahead and bind this off, cast off, bind off. They're the same terminology. Just depends on the pattern writer. And we are going to go ahead and cast off or bind off in pattern. So we are going to knit. Now we need pearls. The pearls on this yarn out so it's not got so much tension on my fingers. And we're going to have to pick up stitches again for the sleeve. And then when we get that other sleeve done, we are going to pick up stitches for the collar band. I, you know what, Felicia? I do the same thing. I love to be challenged. I don't... I mean, yeah, I do some mindless knitting when, you know, I, I'm just not as focused on days when I'm not as focused. But I like to challenge myself, too. Um, I'm going to be doing some things on here that I haven't done before, so you guys will get to see me learn. And I'm going to do it on the live. And um, it's that illusion knitting. I don't know if you guys have seen that, where you lay it flat, or you look directly at it, and it looks one way, and at a different angle, it the picture presents itself I want to do that so I'll do that on here with you guys so you can see if it might be something that you would like to do or learn to or just watch okay we got one more stitch to cast off on this sleeve Do do. All right, come on, let go. Everything's all twisted together, and I don't want it to pull that out. You don't have to use a crochet hook. Sometimes I just go like this and pull a loop through and tighten it down, not too tight, and then go through here again. It's just like taking a crochet hook, and then why well, I put my scissors away, snip that off, and then just pull the rest through and tighten it up. Crochet hook just makes it easy. And then we can lay this down and I'll show you. Try to flatten it out. Get this down here. And you can see the little sleeve. Of course, the only seaming I have to do is here and here. Done deal. All right, now we are going back over here onto the other side. I'm scrolling back here a little bit through the comments really quickly to make sure that I have yeah pretty much gotten all the comments um, is that Nico 
Yeah, Nico. I think it's Kira. Are you still in here? I'm getting ready to do the other sleeve. And I wanted to make sure that you could see. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you. They are not required, nor are they expected. Okay, we are going to do our 11 rows and mark it's this one right over to here. And I'm going to put just a little marker right here because that is two different colors. And that's the row we're going to start counting right there. So that counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'm going to put that marker right there. And you can see the V stitch here. And then I've caught both of them. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. Let's see if we can get a clearer view on that V stitch right there. It's this leg right here and this leg right here. We've got that in our stitch marker. And that is the very, very edge stitch. That stitch is very wonky, but if you take and roll your fabric, you roll your project all the way up to where this is straight, you will see that row of V's in there. And that's the row that I pick up both sides of. Okay, and I'm going to show you how I do that here in just a minute as soon as we get this other side counted. And that one was when we counted. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And you see me unrolling that so I can get over to there. And I'm going to take that stitch marker there. Oh, now we got to count again. Go over to here. Actually, I can just count from this one and count 22. Because my eyesight is not the greatest. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Right there. And again, I have caught both legs of that vertical stitch. The edge ones are kind of hard to do. I'll turn this over here so you can see that I actually roll this until it's flat. I don't have any little bit rolled when I am working that edge. I roll it right, right flat, just like that. And then you can catch that. You can see that very last row of V's. And I catch that there. I don't know if Kira is still in here or if I'm even pronouncing that right. I am very sorry if I'm not. All right, we are going to take our circular needle again. Of course, you could have done this all on straight needles, but because I have limited space between this phone and this desk, I can't get a straight needle in here without banging everything on the desk with it. So we're going to put that right through that hole right there. And we are going to get our yarn. And again, I make a little loop just like this. You know, just wrap the yarn back over itself and have a little loop. This will be my first stitch that I'm going to pick up. I've already got my needle through there, and I'm going to put my loop right on there. Okay? And then, again, I hold this a little tight because I'm getting ready to pull this through the fabric, and I don't want to pull it, you know, don't want to have it fall out. So... Let's go ahead and pick up all those stitches and again making this edge nice and neat and tidy and that one's got to come out we're going to do that one again you can see the little holes that I'm going to go down through and if you can see directly through you know you've got a hold of both the front and back okay just put your needle in there counterclockwise wrap this gets a little tricky because it wants to grab a hold of everything in there. And I don't know why it's being wonky like it is. And we'll work it out. Okay. We'll go to the next one. And after this one, I think I'm going to drop 
the extra that I'm weaving in as I go because that's making it a little a little harder to do for me right now for some reason I don't know why okay now we go to this one and we're going to go to this one and again we're catching both the front and back leg of that outside knit stitch okay and as you see we're not catching this these stitches here along this edge so we've got a nice smooth edge okay here's the next hole you can see it bringing itself right up for you and then when we get done we're going to double count and make sure that we've got 26 or 22 stitches not 26 22 I'm holding my finger in the back and making sure that this doesn't roll up and the next hole will just open itself right on up as if to say here I am right here and the next one all the way over to the stitch marker welcome 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 we are working on a doll sweater just so I can show you the construction of a basic sweater how you can make a sweater without a pattern you just need measurements um, if anybody missed the live and they want to watch it again I do upload all my lives to YouTube I do have class on Tuesdays from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time we do knit and crochet and making sure I'm catching all these stitches here so I don't have to take any out we are picking up stitches for a sleeve on a doll size sweater my sister will be ever so happy to get this I've been telling her I'd make her some knitted sweaters for her dolls because she doesn't knit she crochets the um, the Molly dolls she's made a ton of them one's from there okay this one and then the one where the stitch marker is and we will count and make sure that we have 22 stitches so we match the other side we don't want one sleeve bigger than the other and that got knitted really tight two three four five six seven eight nine ten 122. We have an extra one somehow, so I'm going to double count again. Yeah, we have an extra one, so we're just going to knock this one off. All right. And now we are going to, I think I only did like three rows. Did I do three rows over here? One, two, three. Actually, I think I did four rows and then we're going to do a rib. So we're going to do four rows in what they call stockinette stitch, which it means purl on the wrong side and knit on the right side. Okay, the wrong side of your work in stockinette stitch will look like this. Looks like a bunch of little dashes. The right side will look like a bunch of little V's. You can see all the little V's on there so we are on the wrong side so we are going to go ahead and we're going to purl this row and again I have to watch for my double stitches at the end because I wove in my end a little bit to kind of secure it until I can get this project finished and I can weave in all the ends at the end I tend to weave in all my ends after I wash it um, if you have to block it, I block it and then weave the ends in because you don't want to weave the ends in and then try to stretch your 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 project. Um, same thing with the washing machine. Your um, your project is going to relax. Your stitches are going to relax. So I always weave in my ends after it's been washed or blocked because then you're not stretching. Um, 
or causing it not to stretch because you've got your end weaved in too tight. Just a little knitter's tips and tricks. Here these stitches might look a little bigger but these were the couple that I had doubled up to weave in that little bit of an end because I started it here. Okay, we got three more rows. Two more knits. Make sure you grab the right piece. I have grabbed a piece that I had cut off for weaving in and started knitting with it and ran out of string and I was like, oh, I got to take it back out. We make all kinds of mistakes. Just because we're seasoned doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. Get these couple of rows done so I can show you this. And then we're going to pick up for around the collar band and do those. And I hope that Kira got to see how the smooth edge was done. And I will show you that again here as soon as I get this row done. She was asking how I keep my edges so straight. And I make sure that I pick up both legs of that one stitch. And you can see that there is a nice straight row here across from where I did the pickup. This takes a little while. Um, it's all practice. Um, I don't like to see people get discouraged because they're new and it doesn't look like mine. Or it doesn't look like the person who's teaching them. Well, guess what? They're not new. Theirs look like that too in the beginning. Everybody's does. So, you know. And, and you should never judge your progress by somebody else's journey. Because you don't know where they are in their journey. They could be well more advanced than you. They could, you know, be learning. We all learn at different paces and different ways. Um, I can learn by teaching myself. I can learn by watching somebody do it. And I can definitely learn by doing it myself. Uh, I try to teach all three ways. Um, that way... I kind of can help everybody. If there's anything that I'm doing in class or on a live and you're not quite understanding, please let me know because I want to be able to help everyone. One, two, three, four. Now we've got we've got the four rows. We're going to start the ribbing. Again, we might we should have to decrease this by one again too at the end. Maybe not. I probably had 23 stitches on the other side because I shouldn't have had to decrease if it was even. So I might have had an extra stitch on the other side. Because 11 plus 11 is 22, so... We had an extra stitch on the other sleeve. Because this should come out right. Yep, and two pearls. Okay, and how many rows of rib did we do on this other one? Let's see, two, three, four rows of rib. So we're going to do four rows of rib, and our sweater is going to be just about done. I really need to put that cushion up here. This desk is digging in the side of my arms. There we go, that's better. Everybody who is coming in, I'm currently working on a very, very miniature sweater just to show the techniques of making an actual sweater. Um, being able to make a sweater without a pattern just measurements. I'm working on the short sleeves, short sleeve on this sweater here. I'm trying to, what did we do? We got off somewhere. Knit, purl, knit. 
What the heck happened? Pearl knit. What did I do? Okay, we're supposed to be, no, we're not supposed to be purling now. What? Let me take this row back because something's not looking right. I'm here talking and not paying attention. Oh, I made a boo-boo on the last row. Let me see if I can't pull this back and fix it. Because these two were supposed to be pearls and I knitted them again. All right, I will show you how to fix and change a knit stitch that should have been a purl stitch. You're going to take that stitch from the row below. You see me grabbing the stitch from the row below. And we're going to push this right off of here. Okay? And get that to come out. For a purl stitch, we need for this loop to be in front of the stitch that we're doing. And we're almost going to do like a little switcheroo. There we go. I don't know if you actually saw that, but I'm going to have to do it again. And I'm going to have to do it the whole rest of the row. Because I put four knit stitches together, not paying attention. Yeah, everything's opposite now. we got to change these two. So we're going to grab this stitch here. And we're going to make this a purl stitch. Put this, or a knit stitch rather. And I'm just basically changing the orientation of the stitches here from knit to purl. Get a hold of all of that. Get it back on there proper. There we go. And we'll knit that one. Change this one over. As you can see, I've had to do a lot of this. This back this way. come through there there we go and I'm sure everybody's thoroughly confused with what I'm doing now but I did the wrong stitches together maybe we're back now right because now this one needs to be changed to a knit probably should have just took the row out but this is another way that you can fix mistakes when you've made a boo-boo there we go knit that one this to the purl side so we can change these over and purl them oh, that needs to go to the front so that this comes over there we go oops don't drop it Yeah, that's one thing that I won't do is edit this stuff out so that um, you can see. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And I will share my mistakes with you and I will share how I fix them. This one needs to be a pearl. And this might make my stitches look a little loose right now. You can see how they're loosening up, but they will tighten up once I get all the way to the end. And... We need to purl this one. My eyes are really messing with me today. This is slowing me down a good bit, having to do like this. Probably should have just took it out, and we need a knit stitch. So that goes to the back. There we go. And we'll change this one out. Get that other one to come out from there. Come on. And it needs to be a knit. So that needs to go to the back. There we go. Now we need to do, is that right? Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. No. 
I gotta take that all back out. Just take it all back out. I'm gonna take these two rows back out. There's more than that in there that's a mistake. So we are doing what is called tinking. It is knitting spelled backwards. T-I-N-K. So we are working back the row that we just did. And I'm going to have to work back the other row underneath of it a little bit because that's where the actual mistake is. This is what slows us down, having to fix mistakes. I think I still can get this done in the time allotted or that I've allotted for myself. And actually I'm just grabbing a hold of the stitches from the last row and I know exactly what I did. <laughs> I actually picked it up and started knitting the wrong way. Right here. Right there. So I need to take it all, all the way back to here. So we're going to turn this around and take it back out to that point and fix it. This is called tinking. When you frog, you actually pull your work off the needles and you pull this and it pulls the stitches out. And we'll get back to this spot. And you know, I kind of felt like that I had done that because it wasn't right. I don't know why my mind said, hey, look, you're not doing it right. Plus, when it doesn't look right, it just doesn't look right. Then you got to look at it and figure out what you did. Okay. Now we're back to our first row of rib. Knit two, purl two. That's knit two. Is that right? Let me just go to this edge and we'll look at it and make sure that it's doubly right. Because I definitely don't want to have to start doing it and it's still not right. And we're just going to be doubly, doubly sure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yep, we're good to go. Back onto our first row rib. Sorry about that. Knit two, purl two all the way across. And let's keep this going. As long as I don't have to count them, I'm good to go. And I can just talk away. This is something that, you know, you can do for your daughters if they have baby dolls and they want baby doll clothes made. You take measurements and you have to do a little bit of math. Alright, now we're going to turn and do the same thing again. I think that's what I did. I started with knit stitches and I should have started with pearls and that threw it all off. All right, two knits, two pearls, two knits, and I have to double verify again. I can't right off the top. I think I did four rows of rib. Yeah, I did. Wrote it down. And we've got everybody in here intently watching to see what this sweater is going to look like when we get done. Okay. 
Okay, that's two rows. Let's do two more. And then we can cast it off. And don't get that stuck in there. I hate when it gets stuck in there. And then your yarn's got to run around your needle, which causes more tension. And it can cause your work to tighten up. And at this point, I might go ahead and seam the sweater up too, so I can show you the um, the mattress stitch that I use to seam it up. And that'll give you a nice smooth edge too. Everything should come together and look like it's seamless with the mattress stitch. And again, you've got to make sure that you get it into the open holes and not through any of the threads because the way you have to pull it together. One, two, three, four. We got four rows. We're going to go ahead and cast off in pattern, starting with purl stitch. So, take that one over that one. Knit now. Take this one over that one. I am currently showing the construction of a basic sweater. We are making it doll size to fit around an 8 inch doll. Just so you can see how you can make a sweater from start to finish without um, actually having to, to make individual pieces and sew them all together. Um, the fronts were attached, were, were worked directly off the back. Um, I didn't cast off and then start the front pieces separate. And I actually picked up stitches and knitted the sleeves directly on instead of, again, following the pattern directions and having you make a bunch of pieces and sew it all together. I do this to avoid a lot of sewing. Your seams, my seams, my seams, because I just don't sew things together too well, um, come out a lot crisper this way. Um, a lot cleaner um, when I'm sewing them together. Oh, they are oh so wonky, oh so wonky. So I don't like to do a whole lot of sewing. Just simply because I can't keep the edges as crisp as I'd like to using that technique to put wearables together. Now, as far as, you know, amigurumi or stuffies or plushies, whatever you want to call them, um, I'll stitch those together because it really doesn't matter that much. Wearables do. I like them to look like they are, you know, professionally made with a nice crisp seam and stuff in them. So. Do -do. Okay, we are to the end. Grab my handy dandy crochet hook and take care of that. I always leave a little extra. I never cut it down to the knot because I will um, weave that in later. I always do my weaving in after washing or blocking. Um, now we can fold this down together here like this and you can see a little small short sleeved sweater and try to unroll all these edges so that you can get a good look and that didn't, there we go that edge there and then our next step after you know you can see the little short sleeved sweater um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm not going to sew the seams up just yet, we'll do that at the end and I'll show you the mattress stitch. Um, I'll try and bring the camera down a little bit closer so you can see it. Um, but we are going to pick up stitches around this edge now and we are going to put on what they call the collar band. It'll go up the front, around the neck, and down this side. We are going to pick those stitches up now and I'm going to catch each row of this vertical edge 
that goes right up this side. That's why I always like to have my knit stitches here in the beginning because it gives me that nice vertical knit row. I do have to unroll it and we are going to continue on and pick up stitches. Now you always need to make sure and I don't think that I um, spoke on this earlier. These are a little wonky but we're going to get them in there good and we're going to have a nice straight finished edge. Um, you always want to have the knit side towards you so when you pull the stuff through you pull it through this way onto the right side. Um, if you turn it around the other way that seam edge, this little seam edge right here where we actually pick these stitches up you're going to have that on the front side of your sweater. So always make sure that you have the right side facing you when you go to pick it up, okay? And I always like to start here and work this way. Some reason I just can't work from this way. My brain will not allow me to do it. I've tried several times. My brain just says, no, we are not going to do it. We are going to come down here and we are actually going to put one right here in where we tied it off. That's going to be our first one. And again, I take and fold the yarn back over on itself. Let me just put this aside for a minute. Take this yarn and fold it back over on itself. And then that's my first loop for when I pick up stitches. Stick that right on there. Hold this a little snug. And you're going to work that right through there. Okay. Now we want to find our vertical edge because we want to stay nice and smooth here. We're going to go into this one. And we're going to look at this edge right here until we get through. We do not want to catch this loop right here. We want to go above that. So let me indicate here with this one if I can. We don't want to catch this loop right here because this is the second vertical row. Okay, we want to catch right here. All right, so we are going to take our needle and we are going to stick it into that next little hole right here. And that caught both of those legs. I don't know why I grabbed it with that hand. Keep it out of the way, I guess. And sometimes you have to hold it a little tight and work it a little through. Okay. And we're going to go all the way around, doing this all the way around to the other side. Circular needles work wonders for this because, and here we have to be careful. Yeah, what happened here? Looks like we ended up with a knit one. No, we just got to catch over here. Stitches are a little wonky sometimes. All right, I've already caught enough stitches. I'm going to put that to the back. All right, and we are going to keep going right up this edge. And why is it for some reason it looks like I didn't do two knits over here? Well, we're going to continue up. We'll be all right. We just got to catch both of these. Nope, that's this one and that one. What's going on here? Because it does look like we have just one knit on this edge. I'm going to pull this back out so I can take a look at this. No, we have a second knit. It's just really wonky. Okay. So this one's probably not going to be as perfect. And what I might do, no, because that'll make the seam too thick. We don't want to do that. A lot of planning, a lot of planning. Put that in there. And we are just going to go back up through here. And I'm just going to work this the best I can to keep it this way. This is only going on a, a doll. So it doesn't have to be too, too perfect. But I don't know what it is that happened here. 
get this extra string out of here. And we'll keep picking up stitches right on up through here. Right on up that line and we'll get them. We'll get them. Here we go. We're finding it now. And I think I only caught one on that one. We might have to. This can be a little fiddly and I'm getting a little tight with my wrap around. And somehow. So I'm only going to be grabbing a hold of one loop here right now. What in the world? Come on now. Let me get this untangled here. And get this out of the way. Stay down here. I'm trying to keep my edge nice and smooth again by not catching those other stitches from that row. Um, crochet would add a different look to it. Um, I could, but somehow I have done something to where um, I only have one knit stitch up this side. I don't know why. And here I've actually caught this loop here in there. So I want to come back down here and take that out. I might just have to... Let me try something here because this is just... Somehow I lost a stitch. I end up putting two together. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to catch this row right here. And this is how we're going to correct the mistake because I'm not going to take that front back out and redo it again. Somehow I ended up knitting two of my edge stitches together because I lost a vertical row here. Why is that? It wants to be a pain in the wants to be a pain and slow me down so I can't accomplish what I want to accomplish today but we're going to get this done you're going to see that it's going to be a lot easier once I get this one vertical row here all the way up through there we go see how it's got my vertical row now these next couple of stitches um, what had happened is I inadvertently knitted two stitches together this is going to make my seam a little bulky down here at the bottom but once I get past this here to where I put those two stitches together it will fix itself because I'm I, I went a row in to do my collar band here so I'm catching two stitches or both legs of the stitch I mean get this proper here Use the right words. And we just go all the way up around, just like we did for the sleeves, all the way up and around this opening. And I'm probably only going to do two or three rows. And for this one, we don't need this one to be um, stretchy. The Knit 2 Pearl 2 rib gives you a lot of stretch. So it, it's just like the cuffs that are around your hoodie sleeves. Those are a knit two pearl two rib. Um, around the collar band we're going to do a little different because we don't need that to be stretchy and if you do a knit two pearl two rib it will cause a slight gathering. So we are going to do a knit one pearl one rib which gives you the same rib without the elasticity it just gives you the same finished design all the way around the edges of your sweater. So once we get all these stitches picked up here, now that we're moving along, um, once we get up to the neck part, which we are 
almost here. Let me make sure I get all my stitches here. Okay, this one here. Now we're going to come across the neck, okay? We don't want to pick any of these stitches up because this row, this vertical row that you can see here between my fingers, goes to here. This next vertical row, which is next to that, goes to this first bound off stitch. So we're going to catch in there. And we're going to do the same thing because here you can see the little V's on the top. Each one of those V's is a stitch. And you're going to want to catch both legs or loops, whichever you're used to them being called. And you're going to pull a stitch through those. Okay. And we're going to make sure we get each one of those. And then we're going to go down the other side of the other front. And then we'll work three rows. And then we'll bind off. At that point, we can sew the sweater together and it will be finished. So, this is the slow part. I don't know why my lighting is changing. I can keep seeing. And I'm going to double check this again because... I want to make sure, let me back out of this stitch. This one goes this way. This one actually goes down the front. Okay? So this one here will be the first stitch to go down the front. All right. And we will just continue on. Down through here. I didn't like to do this in the past. I did not like picking up stitches. Um, I did not like finding mistakes and having to go back. I don't know if it is just um, my age that I am more so enjoying the process of knitting now. The actual technique of doing the stitches, you know, finding and fixing my mistakes, um, making sure my tension's good. Um, you want to make sure that this is not too tight. You want to make sure that you are only going into the same amount of stitches that you have. Too many stitches will cause rippling. Not enough stitches will cause gathering. So you should have one stitch in every um, vertical stitch or one stitch for every row that you have in here when you're picking up stitches. Okay, we got a couple more here. And then again, I'm going to come right down in here. There isn't a stitch here, but this is the border, the, the cast off of the bottom border. And we want to make sure that it kind of stays even. You see how it's even there? If not, you're going to have some hanging down and no stitch. But that there is even with your, um, your cast off row. All right, we have all of our stitches on here. Now we are going to do a knit one purl one band. I need to check that. I think I actually I missed a stitch right there. Dang it. When we come to this one, I'm going to pull up and this is another increase for knitting. In between your stitches you have a band or a a string. You can see the strings that run through. That's your little rows. What I'm going to do when I get over to this point is I'm going to pick up a loop and I'm going to knit a stitch in this loop right here. But I'll pick that up when I come around because I missed this row goes right up to this one. I missed a whole vertical row starting on that neck band. 
So we'll, we'll fix that when we come to it right here. I'm going to throw a little stitch marker in there so I don't forget. I don't work past it. And I'll show you how we fix that. Not only are we learning to knit today, but we're learning how to correct the teacher's mistakes. Look at that. All right, again, this is going to be knit one, purl one. Um, actually, I'm going to start this with the purl because we're on the back side. I want it to be a knit on the front. So we're going to purl one, knit one, all the way around. Knit one. This, this one row might be a little fiddly. Take me a little bit of time because, again, this got a little tight. My tension got away with me. I wanted to keep a nice crisp edge because sometimes this does loosen up as I go through. But I don't think I needed to do it as tight as what I did it. So we're going to do knit one, purl one, all the way around. And we're going to do that for a couple of rows. Did I just do two knits together? I think I did. Nope. Okay, the yarn comes to the front for a purl. Yarn goes to the back for a knit. I don't think I state that when I um, am teaching. I need to state everything that I'm doing and everything that needs to be done for that technique um, so that I cover the beginning knitter as well as the seasoned knitter. And we're just going to work all the way through with a, a one by one rib, knit one, purl one, whichever you start off with first. I always like to have the knit at the bottom and because I'm on the purl, um, I want to make sure that uh, the knit's on the bottom. And then it doesn't have to be on the bottom. It's just the way I prefer it to be done. Um, simply because it looks a little cleaner when you have a knit on the bottom versus a purl on the bottom. Um, hopefully we have an even number of stitches to show that it will be a, well, we have to have a not quite even number. It still has to be an even number, but I'll show you on the other side. Here, we might be able to um, see how a pearl looks on the bottom on the other side, and you'll understand why. Okay, we've come to our stitch marker. We're going to pick up that leg right here, this one right here, and we're going to put that up onto, yep, and we're doing a knit, and that was the one that we missed, and we're going to continue on. Knit and purl all the way to the end, and we'll take a look at that pickup edge when we get onto the other side. It's a little wonky this time, I'm going to let it go. Again, this is just a doll sweater, but I do want it to look a little professional if we can. Knit and purl all the way to the end, and it is a quarter to ten. We will have this done before ten thirty. If I hadn't had to fix mistakes, we would have probably been sewing this together by now. And it might be a little harder for me to demonstrate the mattress stitch, but I'm going to do the best I can because this is smaller. Um, I can do some um, demonstration videos that I can upload to TikTok showing how to do the things that I've already done. All right, now let's take a look. We do have that edge there from the rib. And we do have a nice, neat little, um, the back is kind of going to blend together because these stitches were casted off here where it starts to blend together. And then a nice flat edge all the way to the other edge. I don't know if you guys can see that really bright there, but you got a nice flat, even edge there. All right, so we're going to come back to where we were. And this one does have a pearl edge, so I'll be able to show you that at the end, why I like to have knits on the end, but sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Oop, 
Let's not knit that because then the whole rib will be off. Now you're going to go back through and you're going to knit the knits and purl the purls. If your first stitch was a purl on the end like this, you'll purl. If it was a stitch like this, you'll knit. You do that all the way across again. And when we get there, we'll do that one more time and then we'll bind off. And then we will have a sweater pretty much completed minus sewing on. Well, I'm glad, Nana Ray Ray, that you've been here. I do teach a class on Tuesdays if you haven't been here for the whole live from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am, um, I don't know the right word to use. I'm kind of tailoring the class to the student. I want to teach what the student wants to learn. I do come prepared to teach some things in case, you know, Nobody says, hey, let's do this, or hey, how do you do that? Um, I try to start off with basics, and I'm probably thinking about maybe doing some other classes to where um, we can have it more geared towards the new knitter and a different class geared more towards the seasoned knitter and maybe have one dealing with patterns. I'm willing to help anybody in any live that I am doing, whether it be, you know, what I'm doing today, stopping to show you or help you with patterns or assist you with what you're currently working on. Um, it's what I like to do. And because I was taught for free, any knowledge that I receive for free, I believe in passing on for free. So there is no charge um, you don't get off until two. Is that all, every weekday, um, Nana Ray Ray? Because I, I did kind of put feelers out there for, you know, class times. Oh, okay. Um, I'll have to see what I can do. I do put my lives up on YouTube, and I do have a link to my YouTube for my lives, but it's kind of hard to teach you when, you know, we're not in the same live together. Um, I'll have to see what I can do because I only slotted time on the weekdays until 3, um, because that's normally when my husband gets off of work and family is very important to me. So whenever my family's home, that's when I don't do this. I do knit on my own projects, but um, I like to spend time with my family. Something you never get back time. Yep, get it for free, give it for free. That is my philosophy. Yes, Janine. Exactly. Yep, exactly. This is the last row I'm going to do here on this um, collar band. We will have this done here in just a very few minutes. And um, I'll go ahead and cast off. And I know I've got a lot of strings hanging off this now. Um, I did make this uh, for the uh, doll that is about 8 inches around. Um, and this was done purely for measurement and just understanding the basics of, you know, the construction of wearables because I've made enough of them. I think last year was um, all sweaters from my mother. I made a couple for my mother-in-law. And now this year, it's just some of the stuff that I want to do and some of the stuff that I want to make for myself. And I absolutely love sharing my skill. I love it. So we're coming up here shortly on the end of this, and we are going to cast off again. We are going to cast off in pattern. It gives you a nice uh, finished edge versus, you know, just doing a knit cast off or a purl cast off. 
Um, they kind of give too blunt of an edge when you do it just plainly that way. Now, if you're casting off and you're going to work back over, you know, a rib or a collar band or something like that, just a regular standard whatever direction you're working, whether it be knit or purl, just cast off in the same stitches that are in the row below, and it will still, you know, it'll, it'll cover up with the collar band. Or if you're doing sleeves over top of it, you know, it's okay. But, yeah, we're getting ready to do the cast off again. I don't know. Just regular practice is going to help with the speed. Sweaters, hats, and mittens. Yeah. All right, we're going to do our cast off now. Let's try to keep that string out from our things and we're going to cast off in pattern so this first stitch is a pearl start it off right now and then once we get this done we will get out a yarn needle handy dandy yarn needle and we will do the mattress stitch and we will sew this together yeah, tension and speed all come with practice. Um, for the new knitter, don't be so concerned about getting a project finished fast simply because it will um, affect your tension and, um, you know, being able to have it look uniform. Um it, it just takes a little time. Uh, new knitters also count your stitches. Every couple of rows, count your stitches. Make sure your stitch count stays the same. Okay, that will affect what you're making. So that is, it, it's important. Stitch count. Making sure I'm doing my purl stitches and my knit stitches. Taking this up and over. This also is the cast off. I don't know if any of you have heard of the PSSO, Pass Slip Stitch Over. It's pretty much the same technique as what you do when you cast off. You slip a stitch, then you work the stitch after it, and then you take that stitch that you slipped and you pass it over so if anybody and I'll show you this edge I love this edge on a knit knit one pearl one rib I absolutely love the way the edge comes out you still got the look of a rib you don't have the elastic gather of a knit to pearl to um, but it does very well for a collar band where you just want the rib, but you want it to lay flat without any, you know, kind of like elastic gathering type. And what have I done here? I just cast it off in a pearl. Well, let's get us back in order. This is a pearl. I gotta pay attention. Knit pearl, knit pearl. Now we're gonna do a knit. And one thing I like, um, even when I, I worked in manufacturing and stuff, um, every little tip or trick that was taught to me on how to run the machine smoother, I would pass along to whoever I was training simply because if I taught you all the, tic all the tips and tricks that I was taught, um, eventually you would need less help from me. You would be able to do it yourself. So I try to pass things along. And when I make a mistake, I don't hide it. I, I, I'm very, very quick to share when I have made a mistake. So you can see that just because I might consider myself, you know, an advanced knitter, um, we still make mistakes. We still make mistakes.
And we're just working along here on this collar band. And get this all done up here. And I'm excited to get this sewed together. I'm going to have to call my sister here once I get off the live and say, Hey, look, I got a sweater for you. Make a doll. She's already working on one. Um, my mom has one of the dolls over at her house, so I might go over there and try putting this sweater on that doll. And, and if it fits proper, I will take a picture. If not, I will find one. And I will share it in TikTok, find a doll that I can put it on. So you can see the sweater actually on a doll finished. I was extra curious the other day and I might actually try this on a small scale because I don't know if I would actually use it or not. But my um, my smaller dog has hair and not fur, and I have to keep him trimmed down. I might use some of his hair to see if I couldn't make yarn with it. I know kind of the basics and, and have the manual tools to be able to do it manually, but I was just curious if I would... And I noticed that mistake right there. Let me um, see if I can't fix this here because a tiny little piece of the, there we go, kind of split the yarn there when I did my stitch. Sometimes that happens. And we got a, almost done here. Probably about eight or nine more stitches. This also helps me get a little idea on how I can do some. I wanted to do some like color work sweaters for my sister to have for her little dolls. Two more stitches. All right, last one. We need our handy dandy crochet hook here. Ooh, don't do that. Not that we couldn't have caught it, but it would have been a little bit of a problem there. Do our two little chains there. Cut that off. All right, and now we are pretty much finished a sweater. I don't know, Brooks, are you still in here? It is 10 o'clock. This is what it'll look like when you lay it out. A little sweater fold in half. Get that measured up, matched up, measured up. Yes, let's use the right words here. And we have a, a little finished sweater. This is actually a sweater. I was showing um, sweater construction on a smaller scale to where I could show you that you don't have to make your sweater in pieces where they have in the pattern. Oh, Brooksy must be live. I'll have to jump on over there when I get done here and see what she's doing. But it was to basically show the construction of a sweater without having to do pieces. Oh, okay. But yeah, um, I took just a standard measurement. I figure, you know, most baby dolls aren't going to be more than 8 inches. So I took my tape measure like this and just took a look at it. And that's, you know, eight inches. So you have to divide that in half. You need four inches in the front and four inches in the back. And of course, the back we did four inches. Okay. It's a little bit bigger when you, I, I just kind of guessed at the stitches, but it's a little bit bigger than four inches. Um, it's probably will whittle down to four inches once I sew it up because I'm going to use, you know, two rows on each side. And then the front piece, because it was supposed to be four inches, but it's an open sweater, two inches on one side, two inches on the other. 
And because we wanted to add a collar band, we need to add space for the neck for it to lay flat. So I took a half inch off of each side of the two inches. So I did an inch and a half for each of the front sides, right here. Get it all unrolled there. We've got an inch and a half for the front sides. And then we have the half inch. We did a little bit more than a half inch for the collar band. Okay. And that's the basic sweater construction. You know, you take the measurement around the widest part of the torso, normally around the belly, especially if you want to make it for kids. Um, the widest part of your torso, if you have a skinny waist, don't measure your waist. Measure around the widest part of your torso, in between um, your armpits and your hips. Okay? And this will give you just a regular standy, standard, as you can see, boxy type sweater. Uh, there's not going to be any shaping. Um, but that's how pretty much you can construct a sweater. Uh, as far as the sleeves, you will measure from the seam down to the wrist and you'll make them that long. These I just did short sleeves just so that we could move along and you can see how I attach the sleeves to. Um, yes, I did it. Thank you very so much, Jarvis. Okay, and we're, we're missing some of our comments because I stopped to look and didn't scroll back down to the bottom. But now at this point, I'm going to do the mattress stitch. Or actually, I'm probably not going to do the mattress, mattress stitch because that takes me a little bit of time and my eyes are being a little wonky. I'm just going to go ahead and turn this inside out and I'm going to do a regular whip stitch seam since this is just for a doll. But I would normally do a mattress stitch, which a mattress stitch, you actually go down into these little holes here in the middle of your outside row in here in the middle of your V's and you stitch them together and it brings this edge and the other edge together so it looks like an invisible seam if it's done properly. Um, I still am practicing even though 50 years of knitting I'm still practicing with that because it was just this year or not this year, last year, that I actually started making adult size sweaters. Um, sweaters, period. So, you know, even though I am a more advanced knitter in other things and other techniques, I haven't done as many sweaters. So, I'm going to get out my handy dandy yarn needle here. And we are going to cut off some of this so we have for sewing. And we are going to sew this up. And it just takes a creative mind to figure out, sometimes not even creative. You can plan this out. Um, if you have sewing patterns, you can plan out your inches and your decreases to sew the piece that's on a sewing pattern. So you can actually make skirts knitted or crocheted you just have to have it to the size of the knitting pattern or the sewing pattern I mean if anybody sews okay so all I'm going to do is fold this together make sure I've got my edges flat and I'm going to start here at the sleeves and I'm going to sew over this instead of weaving it in again I'm going to do my best to catch both front and back stitches and we want to go all the way to the edge so this one actually will go through the thread and I do have a little sharper darning needle here it is a little older you can see that a lot of it's not rusted but a lot of the coating has worn off of it from a lot of use now I want to be careful and watch the end of this string because what I normally do is I pull it through to where I have a little bit left and I will tie a knot in this right here on this edge Okay, just a regular two little loop notch, like the first starts of tying your shoes together. Just do that twice. And then I'm going to take both of these. I'm going to trim this one down a little bit because I don't need to have that much. I just wanted to make sure that I had enough for when I went to cover it up that it would be covered. Move those things out of the way so I don't drag them all over the place. And then I'm just going to work right along this edge. 
Um, this is actually a sport weight yarn. Um, that I'm using now. I do have all different weights of yarn and I want to make sure that this is on the top and not down here on the side because we don't want to sew our opening up closed. Then I just bring this back over and just do a whip stitch right here on the edge. Don't want to catch too much but I want to make sure that I catch both legs so that on the inside it will look almost as seamless as my pickup stitches. And again, I want to make sure to catch these as I'm going. So I put those under there. Oh, we got a little stuck here somehow. Oh, that was that. We're already through. There we go. And we're just doing a little whip stitch here along the edge, making sure to catch the other things here. The strings that are here in the seam, we, we weave them in underneath of this like this. Okay, go all the way to the inside the where the armpit changes here. We are going to put a stitch right here in this seam so we don't have a hole. And we'll catch that seam on the front and the back just to make sure to keep our stuff even and together. Okay, and I've got those caught up enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip off these little ends right here. Just so I can get them out of my way and make sure that I can see. We've got them secured under here really well. Okay, now I'm going to make sure to roll this back up here, and I should be able to see two V's. And we are going to do our best. It looks like the fronts might have needed to be a little bit longer, but we can take care of that. No big deal. Do our best to catch just... I've got more than that. Okay, just this vertical edge here. Here we go. I like to bring this back over this way each time so that it doesn't get hung up in anything in the back. And I'm going to have to stretch this front just a little bit because I didn't do quite enough rows on the front. Or maybe we'll do like a little high low thing here since we had a uh oh leave the front a little higher than the back and I don't know how we didn't have the same amount of rows well the both front pieces will be like this I'm going to just sew all the way down here I'll get both sides sewed up here really quickly and then I can turn it right side out and show you the finished project. I am going to do a little high-low thing here. I don't know if I'm missing any of the comments. If I am, I am very, very sorry. I don't think I have. Oh, we got some more people coming in and out. I'm working on a baby doll sweater just to show you the construction of a basic sweater, how you can make a sweater without a pattern. And I'm trying to sew this up here and look past the arm that's holding my camera up. And it's holding me up a little bit. We're just going to kind of make this the same length. We'll just have to manipulate this seam a little bit. Because this is just all clothes. And this was all without a pattern or appropriate stitch markers. And making sure we had the same amount of rows on the front and the back. I probably should have counted the rows. That would have made it easier to do the appropriate amount of rows on the front. But we're going to make it match up anyway. That's the beauty. Oh, I just saw a hi. Hi, Emily. How are you? We're working on a baby doll sweater. For those of you just joining again, we're constructing a baby doll size sweater so I can... Oops. Well, that didn't work, did it? 
pull my yarn right out of my needle. So I could show you the basic construction of a sweater. This sweater can be done in adult size as well. There was no pattern for this. Um, last year I did enough sweaters to understand the basics, but I kind of followed the pattern from Mama in a Stitch, her comfiest cardigan. Um, but we did this on a very miniature scale. Her smallest size is an extra small. And I think that might be, I don't know if that's an adult extra small, but we've made it extra, extra small, and this will fit an 8-inch round baby doll. Just so that we could get a complete sweater done, and you can see what I do to avoid having to do a whole lot of sewing. On most of my sweaters, the only sewing I do is the sleeve and down the uh, seam on the side. I don't like sewing the back to the front and the sleeves to the, you know, armholes. I work it right all off the main body and work it that way. All right, we're going to trim this. So we got weave-in ends. And we are going to come over here and match up this other side and get it sewed together. And we come through here, try not to stab ourselves because this needle is a little sharp. Catch that and do our knot so that we're secured. And then both of these strings, this one and this one, I will sew right over top of and we'll get that secured in. Make sure that this stays to the top. We don't want to sew our sleeves shut. Everybody's intently watching to see what this sweater looks like, and I'm intently trying to get it done quickly because I want to be able to show you all right, now we're here to where our collar bands are coming together. I'm going to catch this, and I'm going to snip off these little threads here. So we've got them secure in there now. They're not going to come out. Um, and as I was talking earlier, weaving in all my ends, I wait until after I wash what I've made because if you weave them in and then you wash it and that section can't relax, you're going to have a tight section. So I normally wait until after blocking or um, after washing to weave in my ends. And this is going to be a really quick sew together once I get going here. And again, I'm catching both of the V's of the vertical row on the edge. I know it's a little harder for you to see over here on this side, but I'm catching both of them, hopefully, trying to. Because I have to keep this edge rolled up and this edge rolled up, and you can kind of see the V's on both sides here. I know it's not such a good view camera-wise there, for you guys but and my eyes are definitely not trying to cooperate with me today I hope I don't end up into another migraine because that's what it feels like coming on anybody else get those ocular migraines oof Hessa life thank you so much for the roses thank you thank you thank you you know, the, the first live that I did, and I got gifts. I didn't know that they could give gifts. I just thought that that was something that went across the top of the screen. You know, fly it across your screen, the roses popping up. Um, I got off the, and there was like, I think it was like 131 diamonds. And I asked my friends, I said, what is this for? And they told me. 
And literally, I, I cried. I cried because I didn't expect for anyone to gift gift me anything. I'm here just basically to share. I appreciate all the gifts. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I might end up exchanging them because I went back and looked. I might end up exchanging them for coins and giving them back. I don't know yet. All right, and we are done sewing. So we're going to cut that off long so we can weave that in. And we're going to turn this right side out. And I could have done buttonholes in this, but I didn't because I'm not going to put little teeny tiny buttons on this. And there, let me push all these up into here so we can hide them. So you don't distract it by all the strings. And look at that little sweater right there. Look at that little sweater. Let's not fling that in the floor. We don't want to step on that. Nice little sweater. And that'll fit an 8 inch round baby doll with the measurements that I crafted that with. Look at me go, Brooks. Underestimating my abilities. It is 20 after 10. I still have 10 minutes. Thank you, none your business. I love the name. But yeah, this is the basic construction of a sweater. And I could show you how I put pockets on, but we have 10 minutes. And I probably won't put pockets on this one. But again, I would pick up just like mom in a stitch comfy cardigan, I would count how many stitches I have here and I would position a pocket in the middle of this front panel between where I picked up for the collar band and my side seam, which is looking pretty gorgeous right now. I did a pretty good job. Look at that side seam. Yep. But I would actually take and go here. And we're just going to do about three stitches right here in the middle. And I can show you how I pick them up. On these V's, you can see the V's here. We're only going to pick up one leg. And I think I want to do these white ones because you can see those really well above those blue ones. Okay? I'll pick up one leg, the same leg on each stitch. I won't pick up two. This will be picking up two where you have both legs of the stitch. We're only going to pick up one. And when we decide which one we're going to pick up, either the right or left leg, we're going to pick up the same leg of all the other ones. And I have three stitches right there. I can go over a fourth stitch. And we could put a little pocket right there. I'd probably go a little lower. But here's where I would pick up those stitches. Then I would take my yarn, okay, and I would start knitting. Okay, I would start this way because I have to pull, I have to knit the stitches through. I've already picked the stitches up. So versus having to have a string of yarn, I've picked these stitches up from here and now I can just start knitting. Make sure you knit on the right side. This side, I think, yeah, this side, this side would have to be a purl because it would be underneath. And I will show you that very quickly. I have a few extra minutes, okay? And we will put a little pocket on here, just one little pocket. And again, I just make a little loop with my yarn, run it back over itself, and put it on there and knit those four stitches. Oh, nope, we should purl these because this is supposed to be the inside because this will lay flat against it, so we need to purl these stitches. Sorry about that. Two, three. We're going to go ahead and let that drop. Four. And I'll put a little pocket on here. We'll do this before I have to be off of here to answer a phone call. My hubby calls to check on me every day on his lunch break and we chat. Family is very important to me. So I always, my time is, when they're home, that's where I am. I'm with them. Okay, we're going to turn this one and we're going to purl this row. 
I'm only going to do a couple rows and then cast it off because this pocket's going to be amazingly huge for this little teeny tiny sweater. But we're going to leave the pocket on here just so I can show you how to attach pockets on. And I think we're going to go ahead and do a cast off on this row because I'm going to leave this pocket on here. And this one... I'll cast off on the pearl side. See, I got all my knits on this side and all my pearls on the back side. All right, let's cast this one off here. And then we'll sew the pocket down. I'm going to trim that off there because that's going to get in my way. That was my for my cast on cast off. You can do a rib on a larger pocket. You can do, I always do a rib on the top. Um, I will do a knit two purl two rib because it makes it elastic. What am I doing? I've got to take this over here. I don't know why I was trying to do that stitch again. Talking and not paying attention. All right. We're down to our last little stitch here. Get this off. Um, yeah, I do a knit two purl two rib on my pockets when I put them on. It makes it a little stretchy. Oh, darn it. Now see, we pulled and we pulled stuff out. Now we got to pick these stitches back up. That one was a cast off. Got a little too excited. And we will get these all back on the needle and I will fix this very quickly. There we go. Let's do these two stitches again. This one goes over top of this one. No, that doesn't go over top of that one. What happened? Because that makes it three stitches. Hold on a second. There we go. Put these over back here. Now we'll do our cast off again. Sorry about that. Anything to keep me from getting this done in the time allotted. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just pick up the stitches and knit the pocket right on. Now, um, what I do on an adult size sweater, I will take however many vertical rows are in that front panel and I will subtract however many stitches the pocket is. So let's say you have 10, let's make it 12. You have 12 vertical rows across. Now we are not going to let that pull out. You have 12 vertical rows across, which are the rows that run up and down. And your, your pocket is, let's say your pocket is... Um, Let's say your pocket is four stitches, which we just did four stitches, okay? You're going to subtract those four stitches out of 12, which brings you down to eight. And then you're going to divide that eight in half because your pocket's going to take up the space of four stitches. So the eight you would divide in half. You would have four vertical rows here and four vertical rows here. Is that right? Four, four, four. Yeah, that's 12 stitches. So you subtract the number of stitches your pocket's going to cover, and then the, the, the stitch count that's left, you divide it in half, and that helps you center your pocket into there. And then from here, you just stitch down through these. I'm going to cut this off just so it's out of the way because this is going to get harder to see now. And I think I already put my yarn needle away so I didn't drop it in the floor. Let's pull that back out. 
get a little section of yarn here. If you leave a tail long enough on there, and I just clipped that out of the way, you can sew it together with the tail. Um, if you don't, it's okay. Now with this, I'm just going to show you really quickly how to do the mattress stitch. Um, I line it up with the row underneath. You can see the row underneath, this one right here. This one right here. I'm going to be working down through these holes right here and the holes in these. So I'm going to look at this little pocket piece and I'm going to go down through this little hole right here in the V and then I'm going to go in the stitch directly below it and go down through there. Okay? And I'm just going to show you really quickly. The mattress stitch has its own little tutorial. Um, I will do this together better. And then I come up through that same line right there into the next stitch in the hole in the V. Okay? And then I come up through and I look at that next V in there and I come up through there. And then when you do this and you stitch this into this spot here, you can actually kind of do it a little more like that. Then up into this stitch. And then when you put it down through the last and final stitch and you pull this down through here, you really can't see where you sewed that down onto there. And that is attached. You cannot see the seam where you sewed that pocket on there. Now, I know that this is not the way to do it, but I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you this again very quickly so that um, you can see the finished pocket here. And you will see that it does not just lined up with here. You won't be able to see the stitching in the pocket because you're going through the, the holes in the V's. <clears throat> Always make sure you're catching the very outside row. And that one there I didn't catch proper. I'm just going to come back up and catch it again. That way I want to show you what it looks like when it is finished. And I can show you here now. Oh, one more stitch. One more. Catch this top edge and go right back down through next to it. All right, sleeve. Tuck that little piece of string in so that doesn't distract you from what I want you to see. And you can see the completed little pocket. And you can see that it stands up off a little bit, but you cannot see that it's stitched on there. And that's how I do that. And I'm just going to cut this off because I'm going to take that pocket back off and do it properly later. But because of time constraints, we are just going to allow you to see it without it being properly put on. Because like I said, I will take that back off after the live and fix it. And there you have a little pocket right there on the front of the sweater. I would have done it a little lower. I'm going to move it down here because you're not going to put your hand up there. Or you can use it for a top pocket, you know, like up on your on your chest pocket. But there's the little sweater. All done. And I thank everyone for joining me today. We had a pretty good people in here through the whole duration of the live. I hope that I've helped you. 
um, book crafting. Um, imagination works really well. And I uh, thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you next time. Yeah, give me a follow. Make sure if you um, want to join classes, they're Tuesday from 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, that is current, the only class that I have right now. I am going to make some adjustments. Um, if you can't make that time, please shoot me a message here on TikTok and say, hey, can you do it this time? If I get enough people, I will, I will do another class. Um, might not go too far into the evening. Um, I might be able to do a class from maybe 3 to 4.30, but that is cutting into my family time, which I don't like to do too much. Uh, Van, you're welcome. Van, J-E-63, you are very welcome. I, I like coming on here and showing my work and sharing my skills and sharing the gifts that were taught to me for free, which I will teach for free as well. Um, just give me a follow. Uh, make sure to uh, click to see all notifications. Uh, my lives, the only live that I have scheduled right now is the class on Tuesday from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, but I am on off and on through the week uh, just doing little things like this and uh, showing you the current projects that I'm working on. Um, I am going to go and call my husband back because he just tried to call me. And I probably will be back on later on this afternoon after I get something to eat because he's decided to work overtime. So I try to keep myself busy. But thank you for joining me today on um, the construction of this little mini sweater right here. Um, and hopefully I will see you next time. Happy crafting.